Thank you to the 1,000th power. Thank your way to gratitude through the magnificent power of being thankful that is full of thanks 1,000 times every day. Manifesting a prosperous tomorrow by living in a positive now of daily gratitude. Living a life full of thanks of that which I'm thankful by Coach Stefan Rudolph. Chapter 5 The Fuel of Forgiveness Forgiving your past, nourishing your present, growing your future. Developing the mindset for mastering tomorrow's outcome today. Being thankful for the moment of now. Quote, Build your path of divine growth in life with the intention of all-knowingness for how your destiny sprouts its roots early on. Let not the weeds of the past cut off circulation of growth for the future. Instead, continue water growth through the fuel of forgiveness. This life, your life, my life, everyone's life, all is full of wonder. Take heed to these words through gratitude for the day you live today and the life you are living in abundance. I had to accept this fact even while at a time when I was living a life I truly hated. Here and now at this time of my soulful awakening, I had to find the wherewithal and begin knowing with all on how to accept this in my life as a matter of fact in order for me to grow. A fact that I could use a positive matter in order to instill action for change and growth as a transition out of my old life is exactly what I needed. This is where my life ended and this is where my new life began. In jail, I had died, yet in jail, I was born. This was a matter of true learning and true knowing and growing from my experiences in life. I had to reprogram my mind into knowing that I could achieve a whole new life, a life that is full of amazing beauty and wonder. It was ready and available for me. I knew it, I believed it, I began to manifest it by visualizing it and living in it daily, day in and day out. In order for me to discover this fact, I had to end one life and begin another. I had to find my true self through my old self with my new self working hard to break down the barriers in between. I had to connect the dots between my heart and my mind by silencing and eliminating the mouth full of excuses at the dividing point in between. Quote, Excuses are the ego's past reason and blame for failure of where and how you ended up in life. They are also used as the ego's current fuel for maintaining failure when you let the past rule your future. End quote. My true self was found in the midst of a fog of constant denial of happiness. The ego had created this fog through addiction and rendered my heart unseeable and untouchable from escapism, from my mind's point of view. Thus, when my mind lost sight of my heart, my heart lost connection with my true path of passion in life. This constant view of negativity then only continued to show me what I had lost in life. I only saw through the needy eyes of materialistic vision what it thought I had to get back in life in order to feel better, in order to look better, and in order to be happy. Yet, that better was never felt. That better was never received. And that better was never lived. And soon, the better of which I wanted, yet never had achieved nor received in life, all became further fuel for future failure. This began to ignite in me anger, resentment, and blame. 
blaming all others around me for what my life had turned into. All this led to my near death so many times and the near end of my life. To me, this path was one filled with meaningless outcomes. The blurred vision of addiction and escapism I lived in only fueled me in a way to see my current outcome of financial collapse as a waste of the 33 years of my life that I had lived. Why continue to live? This narcissistically fueled ego asked this question often while driving aimlessly in a blurred vision down the road of life. Blurred through the drinking of excuses that led to blaming others for where my life had ended up. Never happy enough, never humble enough, never good enough, and never having enough materialistically in life. This driver never felt truly content as he sped down the highway to hell. That driver was me. And that highway, that was my life. A life and a highway I had created and nearly destroyed. Yet when the heart began to make sense of the situation, and when the heart began making sense of a solution to make, the heart began taking action and positive results and growth began to follow. The ego, my ego, the old me was spent. The ego was done and the ego had stepped aside and it was done with excuses that no longer worked. The heart then took these steps by making a relevant matter of fact out of a significant breakthrough in my life. A breakthrough the evening of my head-on collision with the center median of death in life. This was actually my new beginning. There was nothing for me to do in this time of awakening. Nothing but listen. Listen to the realization coming from my soul of how wonderful this life really is for me and how I should not leave this life just yet. I had survived once again, yet I knew I had to turn the survive into thrive. This feeling, this realization, this love, all took effect. I then came to the conclusion that in order to have an overview of what life really was about when it came to passion, power, and purpose, I had to lose everything in order to gain the simplicity of nothing. Yes, the simplicity of nothing. This meaning is of a simple fact that the love in life for our life is a choice of us individually to choose and live daily with life. And if I chose not to love myself and my life the way it was at this very moment, then I chose not to live and I was simply choosing death to end my life. Death is a choice. So is love. That's what came to me in jail and in my new life. I began to see and therefore choose the latter, that being love. I chose love. I chose life. In doing so, I realized that this life was full of beauty, full of power, and full of wonder. And if I wanted to be wonderful, powerful, and beautiful, a beautiful spiritual being of human kindness on this world and in this world, I had to be full of reason to live every day to the fullest. Quote, Powerful, beautiful, wonderful. Power, beauty, wonder. Be full of it all every day. End quote. Quote, Simplistic soulfulness is found in nothingness. Here with nothing, you shall find everything in your heart. End quote. I had a reason to live now. I had a reason to grow. I had a reason never to give up. I had to begin manifesting this new life. This type of manifestation became daily clarity in my mind as I cleaned up and fueled up my life. Yes, even in jail, I cleaned up and fueled up a new life. I repeated phrases like this and began doing it and living it 
by placing it into daily action, all until it came true every day. I also began to expand and understand that, quote, what you perceive in life is what you receive in life. What you perceive, you receive, end quote. I believed in myself, for myself, by myself, through my new self, as I created a whole new self. I also began to expand and understand that what you perceive in life is what you receive in life. This became my quote. This thought was implemented into my life to begin my ultimate new life during the worst times and the hardest times of my life ever. A time where all my losses came together and sucked the wind out of all the winds in my life, in my past life. A time where losses ruled my life, destroyed my life, and nearly ended my life. The losses killed my old life, but did not finalize their goal of physically killing me in my present life. No, I was stronger than this pull of death in my life. My one life was over, yet the option was given to me as clear as day at this point. Leave this life or begin a new one. I developed the strength to begin another life, a new life, a whole life. I did so by being so, by creating so, and by acting upon it every day in order to turn all my opportunities into wins. The losses then became wins. This is how I shifted my life. This is how I changed and grew into my new life. I became thankful for the losses and turned them into wins. I found that by viewing my mistakes as lessons, my hardship as fuel, and my past life as an experience for the ages, my view of life then changed. With my view changing, my path changed. And with my path changing, my entire life began to change and began to shift. Even from the loss of a six-figure career, the loss of a company car, the loss of a beautiful wife and a wonderful marriage, combined with the loss of homes and all material items in the end of this life, by doing so, this process actually gave me fuel for life, for this new life. Yes, fuel. It was a devastating set of circumstances for the ego to handle during the time of all these combined occurrences. Yet all the materialistic loss in my past became two parts fuel combined with one part oxygen. This being the fuel of failure and the fuel of acceptance combined with the oxygen of my spirit being born and fueling me with a spiritual awakening in life. This became the ultimate recipe for growth. I never knew it before, but I was living it now, in the now, for the now, owning the moment of now. I was able to fuel my spirit with the oxygen of a new life by breathing the breath of life, by simply slowing down. This was done while focusing on exhaling the stress in life. I began to focus on breath and my breathing with the understanding that I had to breathe in growth and breathe out negativity. Confidence then fueled growth and extinguished the fire of my past stress and anguish in my life. Confidence gave me the fuel of knowing I was on the right path. I had to believe in order to receive. This is what I found. I saw through the vision of life with this newfound clarity that even the right path in life also has its bumps and potholes along the way. Yes, I had lost everything that was connected to my old life, but in order for me to begin finding anything new on my way out of this past life, I had to find my way into this new life. Yes, the old me lost everything and had died a slow materialistic death Yet by doing so and being so through the process, the new me was born in life, born through a slower, more meaningful spiritual context. Then by doing so and living so, 
I found the new me wanted, needed, and desired this extreme hardship in order to grow as it became my new bio in life, for life, by knowing, by now living with life. Yes, a bio, B-I-O, that I called bring it on and used it as fuel, a fuel in order to fuel my new birth toward a new life of future success and complete inner happiness. I had to lose everything in life, that being the materialistic cover I had over my whole life in order to discover, D-I-S, cover, what this life was truly about. This was a cover that once removed gave me a new vision on life. This vision revealed to me my newfound inner ability to uncover, recover, and discover life. By taking this step, it showed me through my new true clarity vision in life how the old me was lost in material items and obsessed with continual growth and financial worth. This life I lived and the old me that lived it was aimlessly lost in how I wanted my life to look, how I wanted it to look like to the masses. It was never good enough as I was lost in how I wanted to be accepted by the many and loved by all. When it came to the old me trying to understand the meaning of life, I was lost, not yet found. I had no idea what I truly wanted. It was a certain me in life created and shaped by society standards that was now lost. This me was an individual that always wanted and continually needed more recognition and more acceptedness through the eyes and views of others in life. What everyone else wanted and accepted is all I cared about and wanted on this path. Yet the more I got in life, the more lost I became on the road in life. My ever needing level of acknowledgement for everyone's acceptance, everyone's appreciation, continued to grow aimlessly as well. The old me never found the true me. Instead, the old me covered the true meaning of life up through a cover-up of money and materialistic items in my life, continuously, day in and day out. That is how my past life was run, always needing more cover, more security, more money, yet never having enough. In the end, and all in all, this is what I needed. This is how I found my true self, my new self. When I lost the money, lost the material items, lost the bling bling, lost me as my old self and lost everything, this old self was dead. And the whole new self began to live. I saw within me, that being the old self, there grew a gain of dependence again and again that word broken down a gain again a gain a gain of dependence on escapism grew and grew in my life this gain became evident based on my daily need for alcohol combined with money more money never ending money needs and material items more and more all of this growth entailed a never-ending growth for alcohol daily. This was stunting my growth and ending my life. Yet I didn't know it. I couldn't acknowledge it. I couldn't see it. The old me was being fueled by alcohol. This became a gain of dependence for covering up how unhappy and unsatisfied I was with my life. The growing level of denial became even more evident for not being able to acknowledge this fact that my past life was over. These two parts of fuel that battled each other as complete opposites were material loss and experiential gain in the process of losing one life and gaining another. The oxygen that pertained to this gain was that of my ability to breathe through awareness and take in life for what it had given me in order to spiritually grow and blossom into a whole new birth of life. From this full awakening, 
the experiential gain came came from my newfound ability to actually see my past mistakes as future fuel for growth. I now saw that my past habit of labeling what I viewed as mistakes could now be viewed as present learning experiences for growth. Thus, in doing so, rather than living in regret, I began to live in optimism. The optimism I always needed and wanted to grow. Optimism for the fact that I now saw through the ego's blocks and began viewing my past life's loss as today's life's gains in order to succeed through my future wins. I saw a positive gain of experience from my two epileptic car accidents, a positive gain of experience from my now four DUIs, and in the end, a gain of essence for life during my jail time now. I could now see how so many events began planting seeds in my life off and on here and there and how they now blossomed into my whole new life. I was fueling them daily, yet until now they weren't growing and now they were blossoming. I could see the growth of these seeds and how I developed a gain of power from each one of them, a gain of power from being homeless a gain of power from being from losing everything, a gain of power especially from overcoming all these obstacles and growing and learning from each and every one of them. In the end, the power of experiencing and living in homelessness and hopelessness helped me mature and grow into a new man. I never gave up. That was the key to my fuel. I learned the meaninglessness of society's view of me for losing everything. It meant nothing. It meant nothing to others, but meant the world to my old me. I learned how their view meant nothing, and my heartfelt passion to live for what I now felt was worthy in life meant everything. I saw how we should all find that passion, and how it could and would help others live and grow with passion for life. That became my passion then and there to help myself in order to help others. Yet to start this, I had to do the following. Quote, blame less, gain more. End quote. Yet the difference I had now on my side was the difference of power. The power of understanding how powerful and full of power I could, would, and will be every time I accept and use and hold the strength of entailing the power of forgiveness. Yes, this came to me as another matter of fact. This is not a type of forgiveness power used for, as forgiving others. No, on the contrary, I found it in myself, through myself, with my new self for now, to forgive my old self. That being my new self forgiving my old self. That was the fuel for my growth. With forgiveness, I found solitude and compassion. I was able to put my old life to rest. It was and is very humbling for a man of my past successful stature to have to admit wrong and thereby seek steps for right. I could see it would be hard for anyone. But I did so by doing so in the new me, humbling myself, taking a breath, being observant in life, for life, with life, through life. And through the compassion with my past, while having a newfound blessing for the solitude of my present, I was able to persist forward and work this new step of personal growth. I could see now that not all these incidents and events were negative. Instead, I shifted my new mindset fueled by the heart to have them blossom positive and to have them become positive learning tools for how I could, should, and would continue to grow in positivity. Everything that looked worse from everyone else's view became the best thing to ever happen in my life. These were positive learning tools for my new self, for how I could, should, and would continue to grow through the power of positivity. Again, blame less, 
gain more. I kept saying this to myself, even in jail, even in the worst times in my life. Quote, stop blaming others, Stefan. Look within in order to look without. Without that blame in life, without that anxiety, without that stress. End quote. When I began to say this, when I began to understand it, and when I began to implement change based on factual quotes and visions such as this, a new lifestyle began to develop in my mind as a seed, another seed that was planted. It was a seed of growth in my life that was watered and fertilized by action and was now growing into reality, a reality of results through an open heart being fueled by love, a love that then gave ease to my mind in order to ease it into acceptance. That being acceptance of change, acceptance of growth, and working with acceptance of my old self and maintaining patience in the growth of my new self in life. By doing so, I had to accept my faults in life for what they were in my past. That of a fault line where everything collapsed and everything fell apart. My past life collided with my present and presented it with total destruction. Yet all the while, this showed me what a bright future opportunity that lay ahead of me. I found I had to clean out my old closet in order to make room for the new me to grow. It was the destruction of my past, growth in my present, and a bright future ahead of me that was now ready to begin. By accepting these obstacles, I began growing with faith in faith through faith. I began doing all that I had to do in order to live life to the fullest and change and grow into the new life ahead of me. Faith, courage, and new inner strength to be believing before seeing is what fueled me. I had to believe in what could be before I could see it happen in life. This fueled me to understand that even though the old me in my life and my old life behind me said I could not do it, the new me in the new life now in me and ahead of me spoke louder and louder each day the new me began to be fueled off the old me. And with this outspoken voice, I began to see, feel, and live a light in life that shined on the fact that this change and growth could and would be done. It could only be done if I believed in the unknown. That being the unknown and unseen that had taken place in my visions and dreams. Of that which I did, I simply believed. I had a belief in a thought, belief in a dream, and belief in using perseverance as fuel for never giving in to the old life ever again. That life was dead, and I had to accept it in order to grow the new me. This belief was now my daily fuel. I had to believe in something I could not see yet this was a big shift, but it was something that I knew was and would be there in my life. It was my new life. It was the fuel of not yet giving up on life and being strong within in order to look without. Without blame on excuses from the past and without blame on others. Quote, the old life must end before the new life can begin. This is spirit versus ego. Spirit must win out as survival. Spirit must win out as survival versus death. End quote. I knew I could and I knew I would never give up. This new quote I end quote is one that first had to accept the obstacles in order to handle them. Acceptance, I learned, is the first step toward a more powerful mindset. Once focused on acceptance, I focused on change. Once focused on change, I focused on planning. Once focused on planning, I focused on action. Then once focused on action, I focused on doing. Once focused on doing, I focused on results. Once focused on results, 
I focused on thankfulness. Once focused on thankfulness, I focused on love. And once focused on love, this love therefore began to fuel the cycle of focus into repetition, repeating this process daily. I repeated these steps in every part of my life. Repeating these actions day in and day out, doing it again and again is what I needed to be done. This then developed a success pattern that I followed to this day for happiness to flow into my life frequently and abundantly and stay and grow in my life every day. And by doing so and repeating these steps, it greatly impacted my ability to handle and overcome obstacles in life. Repeating this process no longer made my past life that had crashed before me an excuse for future failure. Instead, it now made it a reason for results and success. I used the failure as fuel your, yes, fuel your, and began to tell myself to fuel your way to success, Stefan. Failure is the, is the fuel for success. Begin now to fuel your way to success through failure, I told myself. Through learning and through growing, this worked in abundance and attracted growth and happiness in my life that was amazing. That is amazing. Amazing from A to Z. No matter the difficulty, no matter the obstacles, no matter the pain, no matter the results of past decision-making patterns, I learned to be prepared now to bring about acceptance and understanding for these obstacles. I told my new self, quote, see obstacles now as fuel, end quote. I told myself, my new self, telling and blossoming and blossoming my old self, quote, see them as a necessary fuel for success, end quote. Through this understanding and, and action, I began to create the new me that grew through me, within me, and in the world around me that I began to attract and blossom for the new me to grow. Back and forth, forth and back. My wavered life spiraled out of control in all areas of drinking and epilepsy. This is what led me to jail. This continued from the time of my first drink just a few months after brain surgery in 2007 and took off in full force from my third DUI in 2008. The craziness and escapism did not stop until my fourth DUI at this point as I ended up in jail in 2012. My drinking habit, bar addiction, gambling addiction, and alcohol-fueled lifestyle was based on escapism of which hit an extreme level of overdrive in 2011 to 2012. It was an escapism, though, I never realized, I never knew, and I could never emit, admit. This was also the trigger and fuel for disaster that led to the return of my epilepsy and grand mal seizures in 2009. Yes, even after brain surgery. It ran for two years straight through the end of 2011. I could honestly tell when I first returned to racquetball just four months after this brain surgery that occurred on May 9th, 2007, that something was still not totally right in my head. This, quote, not right in my head, end quote, feeling was a knowingness that this epilepsy was still there in my mind and in my body. This was not a feeling connected with addiction nor connected with medication, nor even that being connected with escapism. No, on the contrary, I could feel deep down inside that the epilepsy still had left planted seeds within me. Seeds that needed to be watered with the return of addiction in order to grow. Yes, the brain surgery worked, but it was still left open to vulnerability, to vulnerability based on my choice of either a healthy lifestyle or a continued route of addiction and escapism. These seeds within me were also triggered to grow from lack of sleep, stress, and not being able to live a routine lifestyle of normality. Every time these small trigger reminders came back, the fear began to grow. The fear came 
when the auras and small mall feelings began marking their territories and planting their own seeds for a return of epilepsy in the worst way. Of course, I never told this to any doctors, nor neurologists, nor medical staff, family, or anyone. I kept it to myself in hopes of achieving normality once again, very soon in life. That was my goal. I kept thinking things would turn back to normal. In the bigger picture, my old self kept my new self from speaking out. This latter showed me how much control and power the old self had in my mind and in my life. It wanted back in control. It wanted to live life to the fullest and live a live life to death, literally and figuratively. The old self wanted to fight to prove the ability it, it felt it had to control alcohol once again. This old self, that of the ego, fought to show that I could have a life of a few drinks a day and it would not lose control. It kept bargaining with me. The old self did with the new self. It was versus how it did so many times in my past and it won each and every time for me to take the dive one more time and try to win that battle with alcohol. Deep down inside, this old me didn't die. It still lived and began to waken even more each and every day. It had lived through multiple DUIs and brain surgery and was now fueled by even more excuses to go back to drinking, even though I knew it would kill me. But still at this time, I was strong enough to resist escapism with intent to get my driver's license back and my life back. This time being shortly after brain surgery in 2007, I had been sober over six months and was stuck on a good plan of growth. I stuck on this path and proved myself strong, healthy, and epileptic free to the doctors and medical staff monitoring me. By doing so, they then took me off all prescriptions as of October 2007, just five months after surgery. And I received my driver's license back. This was the ultimate happiness and my ultimate goal achieved back in life now. At this time, I was silent with reasons and facts of why I should not drive though. The auras, the feelings, the small malls, even my burning desire to drink again began to scare me about driving. I knew epilepsy had not totally left my life, but still the inner demon battle continued and I refused to tell anyone this fact. Then in November of this time period, even with a life that looked normal on the outside, I knew all too well from my gut instinct and all intuitiveness that my battle with epilepsy and seizures was going to start up again very soon. I could feel it. I was living it. And I had fallen and I had already fallen off the wagon and alcohol had entered back into my life in full force. And from this time of awareness of the auras, even while sober, to my, till my time of drinking, the small mall auras of seizures officially began to return to haunt me after surgery. Small malls, and the small auras they're called, then started back in full force again on the racquetball courts and in the weight room when I worked out. I was healthy in the day and drinking at night. I began this vicious cycle once again. I began having more and more returning feelings of auras related to epilepsy and also anxiety, all connected to stress as well. From the time of my surgery to the time of me officially starting to have grand malls again was a two year period, 2007 to 2009. In between time though, I lived in silence and I told no one. This was the vice of epileptics that I know is very common. Epileptics who wish and pray for normality. I was now one of them. This was my vice combined with alcoholism and addiction to not have to face life on life's terms. Yet even without addiction in my life, yet, with, yet even without addiction in life, many epileptics can relate 
as they want to ignore their pain, ignore their thoughts, ignore their auras, ignore their small mal seizures, and simply hope and pray grand mal seizures do not happen. Yet they do. They simply come back and begin to haunt you. And we, as epileptics, simply have a hope and a prayer to cover it up with denial. This was the vice that I had and now live by once again. A vice that showed and proved the addict I truly was inside. An addict who did not and would not admit adherence to this addictive personality and the problems that were going to follow. This then ran for nearly four years on the racquetball court and in the local gyms to the time of my noted spiritual awakening and sobriety date in 2012. This was a four year period and two DUIs later that I finally began to wake up. Yet during this time, the combination of alcohol, epilepsy, all added to a loss for the will to live any longer. This was a perfect mixed potion for the death of this now faded me. This was one of three inevitable outcomes that awaited me in life. The three choices included jail, institution, or death. The latter would prevail if a dramatic change did not take place. I had already gone through the first two, both jail and mental institution at one time, for losing control of alcohol, and death was my next option. Following brain surgery and then the return of fuel of alcohol in my life, death now crept in closer to the doorstep of my life. Yet the difference at this time was acceptance. The difference was understanding. The difference was that in me at this time was born the all-knowingness to the fact that where I was at this time was exactly where I had to be and needed to be in life in order to grow. Yes, this step I now saw as a fact, a matter of fact that I needed in order to grow. This step I now accepted with confidence because it was fuel for my success. This step I now knew was the new water for the new seed for the new growth that was planted within me. Growth not yet seen, but now actually felt and lived. Yet even with death creeping back into my life through alcohol and epilepsy, the seed of my spiritual awakeness had already been planted years back during my accidental awakening in 2005. Now I was able to see how connecting the dots of thoughts connected the seeds of life for future growth. I also saw, I also saw in the past few years the fuel of water for this seed came from the experience and acceptance of all that I had been through and grown through in life. And from living in gratitude from these experiences daily, I began to grow. I began to grow as I knew there was no other option. I also knew that many who live in such treacherous turmoil give in and give up to suicide or death in one way or another. Yet by awakening with life for life within me, I knew it was part of the fuel required in order to grow. This seed began to grow roots connecting my heart, mind, and soul and blossoming into a new spiritual garden of life. A seed that had been planted, nourished, and rooted through acceptance was now fighting the fuel of alcohol and overall escapism in life. A seed planted deep down inside of my physically addicted body was now a seed of spiritual growth growing in me for years. It was the yin and the yang taking place in my life. It was a seed in a body fueled from thousands of days of living the alcoholic and gambling addictive lifestyle. It was a seed that was growing even in a lifestyle of addiction and escapism. This was a lifestyle I was so used to living now as a functioning alcoholic that I never realized what a fine line of destruction I was walking in life daily. It was a seed that began to grow in spirit, all the while being planted in a physically addictive body and lifestyle such as mine. 
It was a seed that used the heart-based power of love as its fuel. A seed that began to grow in spirit and have growth from using the heart-based power of love as its fuel. This was the battle, the mind of an alcoholic versus the heart of a man who was a passionate survivor and fighter that wanted a new life. This was a field designed specifically for the preparation of the inevitable change coming up in my life. This change had already started its path and began taking place in my life. Even though physical change had not yet begun, parts of me, parts of myself, and the new parts of, quote, I, end quote, in my place of being were already shifting. I could feel it once again. It was the holy shift taking place. These parts were blossoming with an accumulated growth of awareness blooming within me. An awareness that I could see would benefit with personal growth and began leaving my old life and this addictive lifestyle behind. This was day by day. This was a day by day process of which through acceptance, my view changed. Through acceptance, my mood changed. Through acceptance, my life changed. And from there, I began to grow. I began to grow physically. I began to grow my level of happiness through the fuel of acceptance. That being the acceptance of plausible nothingness. In this period of selfless state being, acceptance of the fact, this fact of plausible nothingness, that I had to do nothing physically to change at this very point, was a shift. A difficult shift, yet one that I faced with strength and all-knowingness that I could and would get through this. But what I had to do was everything mentally, emotionally, and spiritually in order to grow. I had to grow in humbling awareness of how accepting living in this moment of now will help me grow. Instead of focusing on the future and what I wanted materialistically as I had lived in my past, and then also being focused on my past for mistakes now, I had to live in the moment of now in, in order to own the moment of life. I saw how these steps are done through patience and understanding, a patience of being and an understanding of how growth takes time. The ego wants facts and proof of immediate change and the benefits that will follow in order to start taking action on those steps. Yet the spirit seeks stillness and quietness in order to be thankful for life and in order to grow in life. This was the push and pull method I started becoming aware of in life. The pull of the ego to do more for money and status in life versus the push of passion from the heart to do less and take in more through awareness and gratitude from the world around us. Yes, even while driving down a path of life fogged with resistance to growth, fogged from the fuel of alcohol, that fueled my vehicle daily, all through the power of forgiveness, I began to grow in spirit and grow out of my old self. I began to grow in maturity, live in understanding, and blossom through acceptance and forgiveness. I had to live through and grow through a life of failure in order to grow maturely into a life of success. I simply had to die before I could live. And then now, at this new breaking point, a new living point in my life, I could see how living a life of failure for so long caused me to know no other path in life. That is where the repetition came in. I had been living off the fuel of my old self thought toward those who I had felt hurt me personally in my past. So by living in the past, past, by living in the past, past, forgiving those people was not an option. Yet by choosing this path, so too was growth, not an option. I fought this for years until I ended up here now at this point in jail. Now I woke to the fact that in order to grow, I had to forgive. Forgive the past and all the mistakes. 
forgive myself in order to change now and in order to grow now. I had to work on forgiving this old self in itself through my new self in order to grow into a whole new being and a whole new life. And with this difference taking place one day at a time, soon I heard the knock. This knock came from my heart. As my heart beat, so did this knock. This knock was growing, knocking louder and louder and harder and harder every day. This knock was knocking on my blockhead of consciousness that had been protected by the ego for years. An ego fueled by alcohol with growing despair from ever having to change. It wanted to live in addiction. This was the lifestyle of my old ego. It wanted to live until I died. Until the old I, that being the old self, the old me, completely died off. This was the old ego's gold, but the new spiritual spirit's fuel. The new spirit's fuel. The old ego fought the change that was growing my life out of and away from addiction. An addiction that had been growing for years and digging my life's grave slowly one day, one drink, one negative thought at a time. This was an addiction that continued to fight the spiritual change taking place in me, through me, through this entire seven year shift time period. It was implementing growth in me to take a wayward route away from escapism and begin grounding my addictive lifestyle. This was a lifestyle I had fallen prey to in my past and slowly watched transform my present life into misery again and again at times. This was an addiction that continued to fight the spiritual change taking place in me during this entire seven year shift time period. It was implementing personal growth in me to take a wayward route from escapism and begin grounding my addictive lifestyle. This was a lifestyle I had fallen prey to in my past and slowly watched transform my present life into misery again, one day at a time. Yet the ego fought harder and harder day in and day out, always wanting more and wanting it now. Still, the spirit had awoken in my heart and began knocking louder and louder on my mind as my intuitiveness for spiritual growth began to grow. Eventually, I not only heard the knock, but I listened. I listened with a new inquiring capability that entailed working on shifting my understanding of life, shifting from asking what is that? To ask more deeply, thoughtfully, and soulfully, why is this occurring? And how can I learn? And how can I grow from it in my life at this time? This latter form of questioning was brought about from a deep, from a new deep seated need and desire for shift, for change and for growth in my life. I began to partake in all these steps by first connecting the dots of thoughts to open my heart through the fuel of, of the spirit, a spirit that wanted to grow, a spirit that created a new power within me to shut up the ego's voice around me. I had to control, I had to get control. Control was no longer an egoic function though. Control of my life was a spiritual connection. I now had the ability to quiet that world outside of me and begin to grow that new world inside of me, within me. Quote, listen less and grow more. End quote. I told myself this quote over and over. I had to understand it. Listen less to the ego and grow more at heart. I had to eliminate that mouthful of excuses in between those two entities, the heart and the mind in between was a mouthful of excuses from this knocking from this awareness and from this shift came a voice a voice telling me quote have patience it will be have patience it will be the new me then listened i was open open to hear this voice within me it was a voice within my heart 
a voice speaking softly of change. It was the voice of my soul. Quiet at first, it was the voice of reason, the voice of awareness, the voice of change. Thus I heard, and thus I listened, and thus I continued to grow. This voice told me to welcome change. This voice told me to welcome challenges in life. This voice told me to welcome obstacles in life. It told me to welcome all that life gives me in order to grow. This voice came into fruition in 2005 from my accidental awakening, but then implemented full growth in 2009, just two short years after my brain surgery. Here, when I had awoken in the hospital from my first returning grand mal seizure after brain surgery in 2009, I knew that my life would never be the same. Yet something deep down inside told me this time a unique fact about this incident, a fact that entailed spiritual awareness and connectivity, a fact fueled by welcomeness and acceptance. I found that by accepting my mistakes, accepting my faults, and accepting my so-called obstacles at this point in my life, I more quickly began to bring about change, growth, and prosperity. This change was dramatic in 2009 with the return of my first seizure event since brain surgery. This was a tremendous test in my life as I awoke on the racquetball courts in Escondido LA Fitness, not knowing where I was or who I was in life. Tears began to flow once again, as the one thing I did know intuitively and spiritually is that the seizures had returned in full force in my life at this point. I always knew that if the spiritual alignment was right at the time in my life in 2007, after brain surgery, I would have remained healthy, remained focused, remained vibrant, and remained sober. Yet from the very beginning after surgery, I told no one of the fact that I was still having many slight, yet significant, small mall seizures. These were feelings and auras of which included anxiety in the stomach, tingling down the arms, my left arm mainly, numbingness through the various parts of my body, all of which were many times accompanied with dizziness, lightheadedness, and a fog of unknowingness that took over my conscious state of mind. These stages of related feelings and auras would usually last 30 seconds to two minutes. Some would continue on for longer and many times also include the feeling of nausea to a point of throwing up, of which was fueled from the fear of death. Yes, the fear of death and of dying on the spot was a common occurrence in the thousands of small malls in my life. Still, I was too scared of losing my driver's license again and taking me back to where I used to be in life. So I truly told no one and banned all communication with anyone about my still diseased brain and my struggling mind and my disconnected body. I told no one. To me, I could see that just like my life and relationship with alcohol, I was in denial of having any problems when it came to my epilepsy. The denial worked for this two year period after surgery until the hundreds of small malls added up into this first grand mall seizure in my life again. All had scared me emotionally once again, scared me and scarred me to be able to function normally any time in my life ever again. Waking up from the seizure to that once again gang of ghostly looking faces from the onlookers surrounding my present being was horrific. I knew I was back, back in the gates of hell when it came to epilepsy and seizures. As I woke up on the racquetball court floor from an unconscious, passed out state after having a seizure, I was mortified. Not passed out from alcohol, but passed out from my inability to deal with life, face life, and create a new, healthy life. My old lifestyle had come back into play, and therefore the old consequences began to show themselves as well once again. 
Here is where I woke to a blurred state of nothingness in my mind. Each and every time I had a seizure, it was the same blur and the same nothingness, of which once again began sucking out the everythingness I had in my heart for life. The everythingness that I had gained from surgery, gained from sobriety, gained from health, gained from wellness, and gained from the ability to grow in my life, all immediately had been sucked dry from my system of spiritual growth. The life to live and the will to live had been sucked dry from my heart. I couldn't face it anymore and wanted to end it all, once and for all. In racquetball, in health, in wellness, and end of my life. I felt the consequence of alcoholism and the aftermath of dealing with epilepsy. Combined, these two areas were a fuel for me to give in and give up on this path of failed recovery and a failed life. I did so not through a choice of suicide, but did so by choosing death through addiction. This was the easy way for me to let life pass me. I gave up on fitness and gave in fully to alcohol from this point forward. Within a 12 month period from this date, two more grand mal seizures occurred at two separate LA fitnesses in Escondido and Vista, California. One occurred in another racquetball court and the last by cracking my forehead open on the hard tile floor in the Vista Gym men's locker room. This was an event where I could have lost my front teeth by hitting the tile. But God's plans did not include this horrific could have in my life at this time. My forehead hit before my teeth and I woke in the hospital once again as I was living in this insanity of my past every day in my present and it was never changing. The cracked forehead skull bled profusely, but the ambulance, the paramedics, the nurses, the doctors were able to help me heal. This seizure occurred for me. This seizure occurred by me pushing to achieve a higher level of fitness. This occurred through extreme extra sets of free weights in the weight room and pushing myself to an extreme on the cardio that day as well. Pushing and pushing, trying and trying. I did both in order to be someone else in life. Someone else that my old self who was not yet on the shelf, was not ready to let him take over in my life. I worked out hard in the day, but also started once again partying even harder at night. This combination was catastrophic. Thus, the worst seizures of my life occurred during this time period. Quote, Welcome challenge. Welcome change. Welcome hardship. Welcome all as you welcome choice in life. From here, growth shall become your new welcoming, and growth shall become your new choice." End quote. Still, I wasn't done. I wasn't done completely giving up on life, and I wasn't yet ready to give in and take my life through suicide. The benefit of a once large male ego still having a say in the matter of my alcoholic life was that it was not going to show its weakness by pulling a trigger, jumping off a bridge, or taking its life in any way. That would have been giving in to death and giving up on life. And the old male ego of mine did not want to take that step due to fear of what other people would think once he was gone. Yes, crazily enough, later in sobriety, I saw this made no sense. But even crazier at a time of living a life of drunkenness, it made all the sense why I should not take my life, but why I should end my life. Those were two separate entities. Not taking my life through suicide, but ending it through alcohol. Sadly and sadistically, the ego wanted to work blame and fault on other areas in my life and other people in my life, all in order for it to feel better during the pain and failure I was going through and dying through in life. All in order to make it feel better when I drank and drank and never stopped. It wanted to remain in charge and chose to make decisions based on alcohol, based on gambling, and based on overall escapism and blame. 
of others. This way it had someone and something else to blame in life for failure besides its own self and its own past decisions. A few months after this last major major seizure that occurred due to combining fitness and alcohol addictions, I chose the easy path. I sold all my racquetball gear and took the money directly to the local bar and began drinking. Yes, this was my life. This was my choice, and this was my final decision on a way out. A decision fogged through the denial to not classify it as a suicide, but instead see it as a way out of ending this path in life that I was on. Here in 2009, I began drinking heavily, nonstop, day in and day out. Now at this time of making the decision of addiction over health, I knew it was deeply insane. It was a deeply insane choice and psychotically ill of me to choose this path. It was a true path of death through a slow, painful, depressing suicide in life. Yet, that is what I was choosing as the egoic addict in me did not want to listen to change nor ever live in sanity. Once again, live in sanity a sane life. The ego did not want that. This addict took over the driver's seat once again in my life as it viewed death in the rearview mirror, creeping its way closer into my everyday life. Still, there was a shift taking place. A shift that showed me a new part of my destiny of which was this necessary step for growth in walking down and surviving through this daily path of addiction. Especially during the early morning hours of hungoverness, I could see, feel, and vouch for its fuel of necessary clarity. This began to include the deep feeling of have tuitedness, have tuitedness within me, that of something clicking deep within me, deep inside me that told me, you have to do this. You must experience this sickness and illness and live through this time in order to grow stuff on you must do this in order to become a new man. Yet it was truly scary to be shifting back into addiction and escapism and actually knowing it. I was giving in on a daily basis to drinking, knowing that the outcome from addiction and alcoholism was that of being ruled for life until it possibly ended my life. This understanding of giving, it, of giving in but not giving up on life fueled me with fear. Actually seeing myself taking the steps of giving up and giving into addiction, knowing all the while I could not stop drinking, all of this fueled me with extensive fear. The fear of death was knocking at my door, and I could not answer. I didn't even want to listen to it. This change and shift back into an addict and back into a professional escape, ar- escape artist, as I called it, escape artist is something I knew I should not be doing. Although deep within me, deep where this domineering addict known as my drunk self battled growth with a weapon of escapism versus my now awoke subconscious spiritual self, I knew I had to be here. The spiritual self told me and confirmed that. It said battle on. Sobriety will win someday. I knew I had to be living through and growing through this the worst hell in life of which we label addiction. I was in the middle of it. I it was something I saw that I had to accept and had to experience in order to finish completing and grow out of my journey on this current path of death and grow into a new learning path in life. Deep down inside there was a part of me that accepted it as a part of me and a part of my path and the meant to be in my new life. Everything I was doing and every decision I was making that the past, quote, me, end quote, was still implementing now in my life, knowing it would ruin my life, I saw through its evil cover and knew how it was my destiny to live. I saw how it helped me gain the strength to again learn, live, love, and grow through current and future obstacles. I had to go through it in order to grow through it. 
It was a seed I saw multiple times in my seven-year shift from 2005 all the way till 2012. From car accidents, DUIs, seizures, brain surgery, bankruptcy, divorce, homelessness. These were all signs of the seed asking for more and more water in order to nurture and grow out of this life of insanity. It was a seed for my present being state of mind, spirit, and life to finally acknowledge, work on, and let blossom and grow into a new path of life. Quote, of that which I'm thankful, End quote. I continue to repeat daily this phrase in my life. From here, even as a being still fueled by alcohol at this time in my life, I finally accepted for the first time in my present being that this seed that was planted must be recognized, must be accepted, and definitely must be watered and nurtured daily in order to grow and begin growing in my life. This through the water of patience. I saw this and believed in it as the nurturing water that would fuel me in growth. The water of patience for future growth on my future path then began. Instead of waiting to see growth and then believing in it, I began to believe in growth and soon began to see it. This step changed my life. I shifted once again with the holy shift of turning these two areas around. Instead of seeing before believing, I believed and then I saw. And yes, it worked and continued to work. I saw results of heartfelt belief of growth in life even before growth occurred. All began to come true through positive thought, positive belief, and positive action in life. Yes, the ego was winning and had won and was drinking and my addiction was still taking off and escapism still ruled my life. But my decision-making patterns and reason behind them I knew were crazy. I could see through it now. The addicted driver in the driver's seat of my life did not care. Yet the spirit within my heart did and the love was being fueled for life. The addicted driver wanted more power, more alcohol, more gambling, more terror, and more speed in the fast lane of life. It wanted it all, as it lived never satisfied and never happy. Still, even in this blurred state of mind, I knew through the spiritual awakening deep down inside that God had a plan. This was my life. I had to change, I had to learn, I had to love, and I had to grow all of it in life, through life, with life, for life, to become a brand new life in me. It was confirmed in my mind that the best way to go in life would be to sober up and focus on staying completely 100% healthy. I knew if I could take this path that I would have another shot at life a life that could and would be magnificent. I knew it as a fact at this time, but in living in my old mind, the new me did not have the power of decision-making just yet to change my mind. I could not do it. I could not act upon it, and therefore I could not yet become it. I could not live with the amount of work it would take to defeat the past and grow into a whole new future and a whole new life. When I could remain sober and did achieve brief time periods of sobriety, this was my fuel for the future and my fuel for a whole new life. Yet the past was too strong and simply continued to win. And by doing so, and by letting it be so, I gave up on any potential for achieving a quote, normal, end quote, life by simply and easily giving up on sobriety. This was through the power of the old me's need for control. Once again, the power of the, quote, old me's need for control, end quote. It was stronger than the new me's need for birth. With fuel from reasons of the past and reasons for not changing, my life slipped back into insanity over and over again. These reasons of the past and reasons for not changing continued to fuel my insanity 
for the life I wanted to end. The old me would simply not listen to reason, and the new me, as it was fighting to come out, knew it. The new me then finally surrendered at this time and told the leader of my past, quote, Good luck. Maybe I'll see you at the next crossroad. End quote. This is how I felt with my new life wanting to be born, my new spirit pushing me forward. Yet the old me, the addicted me, the effort me wanted out and wanted to end it and did not want to choose a loss. It wanted to end my life. This is a voice every alcoholic and every addict knows and lives with on their path in life. That voice of guilt, the voice of shame, the voice of regret, and the voice of overall misery. Especially on the routine prayer hours like I had from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. during my morning prayer service to the porcelain god. A service time where on my knees I was throwing up, living in a miserable state, shaking many times, and wanting to give up on life. These areas of delirium tremors, side effects of being hungover, too much alcohol, way too much for my system to handle, throwing up, I wanted to have that passion to live life back in my life, but I couldn't do it. At this crossroad, my passion in my heart had given up. The voice of reason and the voice of sanity was strong during these early hours though. It was a time I was most open to change and at a time I know many alcoholics experience needing change and wanting growth. This voice that I had agreed with hundreds upon hundreds of times during the hours of 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. even up to 11 a.m. daily was a voice I knew I had to learn by, listen by, and grow by. Yet after throwing up and having most of the alcohol drain out of my body by the afternoon, the voice that was in charge the evening before at the bars for so many years, so many beers, and so many tears continuously crept back in my life right at the noontime in order to remain in control and remain in the driver's seat. That being the voice of the drunk driver driving their car of life and not caring if I lived or died. It was a separate entity from my spirit, from my heart, and from my will to live, yet it wanted to kill me. This is the voice that remained in control. This voice made me powerless in the passenger seat as I simply sat back for the ride every evening at 5 p.m. as I hit the bars once again. Just 12 hours earlier saying I wanted to die and I had to stop drinking, to now sipping my first beer out of eight, nine, ten plus beers to come every night. This then became a route, a truthfully honest route, that worked for my body. Crazily enough, it might not have worked for anyone else, but I found it worked for me as a functioning alcoholic, a functioning alcoholic epileptic that is, that needed to maintain a fix in my life in order to avoid seizures and avoid delirium tremors and avoid anything that followed. Then I did it. I changed my life for the worse and gave in fully to alcohol at this time. The spirit to live was silenced. The soul was covered and I could no longer listen. I got rid of fitness. I got rid of health and I drank and partied three to seven plus hours every evening, seven days a week. And yes, crazy enough as it sounds, it worked for me in this midst and in this physical addiction that I was in. It was a prescription and a medication to live in life that I had to continue due to my addictions. When I drank, I felt good. When I woke up the next day, I wanted to die. Not in a suicidal way of literally killing myself at that moment, but in the context of a slow suicide done in my life drink by drink, ounce by ounce, hour by hour, day by day, and fueled excuse by excuse that followed by blame after blame on others. All this backed by an addictive mind deciding on death versus life without ever revealing the consequences of its intentional desire to end my life. It was well hidden, the lies and deceit of this addiction mind. 
All this was successfully covered up for years through the fuel of my relationship with alcohol in life, of which I began to see was the fuel for narcissism. From this point forward and since my divorce, I had no one in my life as a real relationship, no one that I could ever call my significant other. No female had come into my life that was strong enough to fuel me with more love than the love I had for alcohol and the love I most had for partying. No female stayed long enough to make a loving impact on this change and definitely no quote normal end quote female could fall for the fact that my love for drinking would never be replaced by their love for me. This was my life and this was my choice. I had no one to blame and no one to be angry at, yet alcohol fueled the blame and fueled the anger. So instead, I chose to wake up next to empty beer cans around me, messy food remnants all over me, and many times a bed full of sweat and puke surrounding me. This choice became routine. I knew it was a sickness, an illness, and a problem that had to stop. There was never again lipstick all over me. Instead, now there, were, there was Alberto's Mexican food hot sauce stuck on me from the night before. I awoke to drunkenness and lost memories in a blurred state of vision from the evening prior. Lost was my current self, and lost were so many evenings of memories, of which I no longer fought the fact that I thought I would remember. Instead, I lost those facts of life. I had nothing to remember the morning the next morning I lost that I used to remember a normal drinking night the following morning now that never existed and now my physical life became much worse in my life by not living for life any longer then after my first return seizure and being re-prescribed massive milligrams of anti-seizure prescription medication by, ne by my neurologist and doctors for epilepsy I did not stop drinking. This again was the insane insanity I lived in for life. Alcohol fueled the vehicle of death which I drove. Alcohol was the leader of my life. Alcohol was what all my daily decision making patterns involved and revolved around in my life. It wanted to end my life completely. Alcohol gave me problems I never wanted to face and I never could face based on what caused them. Alcohol was the problem and I knew it, yet alcohol made me not be able to face the problem. And deep down inside, I even knew this fact. I also knew without it, I would have no problems. If I wasn't drinking and I wasn't addicted and I wasn't escaping, these problems wouldn't be there. Yet my thoughts, decisions, and life all continued to focus on and around my next drink. There was no end. I found that if I was able to take meds and drink my beers religiously, life was seemingly okay to live day in and day out. This meant I could never detox more than 24 hours and especially never over a 48 hour period. If I, if I did or tried or had to from being so hungover and or physically sick with a cold or related illness, the seizures would return. They only returned when my normality was broken. That being my normality of addiction, my normality of bars, my normality of escapism. I could not break the addiction to this normality. Otherwise, seizures would return. That was the threat I had from my epilepsy, the threat I had from my addiction, the threat I had from my past life trying to remain in my present life and not let a new future life of growth take over. A normality I could not even break while sick and coughing. I noticed others telling me how I should slow down for a while and get over my cold when this, when this winter sickness occurred every year. But I simply could not and would not stop. While my heart wanted out of the insanity, escape was not an option as my body and my brain had become addicted and needed to remain in control. My brain and daily decision making seemed to accept it and adapt to it as its new programming. That it 
being the decision-making patterns of an alcoholic lifestyle. That's what it was that it accepted. Seizures and aura feelings were less and less frequent if I did not combine two different lifestyles, that of sobriety and that of drinking. These were a deadly combination for seizures to return. Half drunk most of the time, if I tried to be half sober, the seizures would come back. Once I realized this fact from my body at this time, the alcohol ruled my life for more than a year in this addictive state. I was all in and all or nothing. That was my attitude. That was my lifestyle. That was my drinking. That was my epilepsy in and of itself, all being controlled by alcohol. This was a fuel for narcissism. I cared about no one except my life of drinking. My mind, on the other hand, was the part that wanted out. The mind that talked its loudest, trying to, trying to silence the fuel of the spirit within me. All when clarity and reason could be heard clearly in the morning hours, this mind battled the spirit. This spirit that spoke its loudest when first awoke to tell me spiritual growth orders such as, quote, sober up, Get out. Stop this crazy insanity lifestyle, Stefan. Stop it. End quote. I wanted out of this insanity that I was in, but it wouldn't stop. Only during these early morning hours would I ever listen. Early morning hours that passed slowly. Each and every dry heave that I gave, each and every puke that I had, and each and every prayer that I followed as I knelt before the porcelain god, my time slowed down at this point and I wanted out. This was done in what I labeled as my early morning surrender time. Every morning I heard this battle conference with the heart speaking and connecting clearly to the mind through the spirit, a spirit with true intent of change and growth. All the while with intentional timing for the demon of alcohol to be at its weakest from the night prior, asleep at the helm from a night of partying. This was the best time for me to listen to what I wanted to turn into and become when it came to health, wellness, and personal growth. A growth led and fueled by my new spiritual adaptive warrior mentality that was now developing and now growing. All of this done with an intentional timing as I knelt for long minutes that sometimes turned into hours, praying that I would never drink again bargaining with the insanity that ruled and fueled my mindset and my lifestyle through addiction, pleading with the angel to rid my life of the weakness to never say no to the devil when it came to drinking and having alcohol as a part of my daily life. <clears throat> Here on my knees, I saw how excuses fueled by alcohol led to my failure, and I saw how my life run by alcohol could and would lead to death. The insanity of puking, praying and saying, quote, Oh, I'll never drink again. I promise. End quote. This battle repeated itself every morning as I held this battle conference with my heart speaking to the mind through the spirit. The heart spoke of intent for mandatory changes in my life. It spoke during these hours, knowing that the demon of alcohol was at its weakest from the night prior. It spoke in a routine of change and growth and the benefits that would follow. It made clear that myself must work to absorb this content and change and grow, even during my addictive state in the later hours of the day. Early mornings, when most often I would be praying to this porcelain god, throwing up from the previous evening's alcohol overdose, overdose the clarity and reality of the need for change and need for growth was at its strongest. Early when the fog of the hangover actually gave me more ability to think and understand clearly in order to perceive and receive a life without alcohol. This is when life's reality would hit its hardest. This is when life hit me head on about what my future had in store for me if I continued living this highway to hell on this path of insanity. This is where suicide and ending it all came in and out of consciousness and in and out of reality. Yet even through sober thought processing, I was never able to make this decision an option when it came to giving up on life. I was too addicted to stop drinking, too weak to choose death, 
and too blurred in my drunken reality to choose life. All I knew as the driver on this tollway of insanity was that by choosing death, that meant I would then have to stop drinking. This was simply not an option. Thus, the question would come to my mind, so what do I do? What path do I choose? This never-ending cycle fueled by alcohol was one that had no answer to this question. I then realized insanity has no answers. I was living in it and lived in it for years, but it suddenly dawned on me if I wanted to change and I asked questions that pertain to change and growth, insanity had no answers. The lifestyle of insanity involved in the addiction of alcohol simply creates reasons to continue drinking and points blame on others who get in the way of what your next step and your next drink will be. That is what I told myself, that is what I taught myself, and that is what the old self fought in my new self. Insanity never stops until your life finally ends. This was the self-realization I came to and needed to have in my life in order to grow. This cycle continued and every big decision for me was a big blur. For the next two years, the insanity never stopped and still in some crazy spiritual way, I knew this fact all along was needed for my growth. I knew this fact as I now saw it as a matter of fact, that I could welcome all hardship in my life with an open heart and with open arms welcome it as deep down inside I was now living with a new spiritual confidence. Yes, it was minor, it was small, but it was growing. Confidence and knowledge from my past paths of mistakes that I still had to live through hell in order to get to heaven. That is what I realized with these open arms. I began to welcome the challenge, welcome the change, and I started welcoming growth. Thus, at this time when my drinking started back up, just six months after brain surgery in 2007, then my third DUI occurred six months later in 2008, then my seizures returned within the next year in 2009, and then when I was in and out of the hospital for the next two years, the seizures, the concussions, and the epilepsy, all related incidences made me awoke to the fact that I would be dying if I didn't change. So I never gave up. Each and every time these seizures and epilepsies occurred, I had to give in and I had to wake up. But in the mind of an addict, of which I was ruled by, quote, now, end quote, was never a good time to stop or change anything to do with my alcohol habits. Working to take the first step to, quote, begin and end, end quote, was never a smooth process when it came to ending a life fueled by a poison that I now drank for life. A poison that would ignite the fire of the fuel of addiction and would inflame the reasons for escapism. All the while, as it worked its black magic, as it doused the flame, the fuel of the spirit with excuses for why my life should remain the same and never change and never grow, this is how it ruled my life. When the spirit sparked a fuel of growth, the alcohol, the addiction, and my old lifestyle put it out immediately. From this point forward, my life spiraled out of control. Brain surgery one year, jail the next year. It was the insanity I could not stop living in. Yet God and the universe showed me how to believe in these occurrences and how to grow from them. All by acceptance, acceptance of knowing that they did occur for a reason, they did occur for a reason for me to grow, was I able to grow and able to live through this. I had to simply not give up. I had gone from being sober one year and growing after having brain surgery on May 9, 2007, to ending up in work furlough program, AKA the summer camp for jail, exactly on my anniversary date of May 9, 2008 exactly one year later after receiving my third DUI on February 18th, 2008, my life, my heart, my passion to live, all were lost. This one year brain surgery anniversary date brought with it massive depression. 
Yet it was much needed sober depression that stemmed from my new growing ability to take responsibility and take blame for my decision making that led me here. Depression that also stemmed from knowing that everything I had worked so hard to achieve up to this point, I had lost in an instant. Thus, after this 92 day work furlough program was completed, I returned to work as I normally did with my ankle bracelet still on, but now no need for my probation officer to show up for his routine checks on the attendance at work. The work furlough program had required this, yet at this point, since I was out, they no longer needed to be there and check in. Yet still the ankle bracelet had to be on for another six months. This was how this work furlough program ran making sure to hold me accountable on a weekly basis for going to work and not drinking. Yet then, one week after returning to work, the stock market crashed in 2008 and our economy tanked and hit rock bottom. Then of course, being in the timeshare sales industry as I was at this point, when the financial collapse took place, our entire sales department was immediately laid off. Just one week out of getting out of work furlough, I was unemployed and looking at homelessness. I had not drank yet. Alcohol was not to blame for this point. Yet escapism was on my mind immediately. From here at this point forward, I went through dozens of jobs over the next four years as the struggle was real. No one was hiring. And even when I was hired, the loss of confidence in myself led to many short-term gigs. Thus, I began drinking and thus, Again, I lost everything. I had begun living in an RV in 2009 at a friend's house in Oceanside, California. From five years earlier, having a six-figure successful pharmaceutical sales job and a million-dollar home in Anaheim to facing homelessness, living paycheck to paycheck in Oceanside, California. I was lost, not ready to be found. My routine habits of thriving and growing in life quickly shifted and remained stagnant for these years at striving and struggling. They had changed so dramatically that I was simply trying to stay off the streets from 2009 to 2012. It was a scary feel, a scary, it was a scary fear constantly burning through a newfound pain in my stomach. That of anxiety, that pain of stress, that pain of depression, and that pain of all the above day in and day out. It was survival that was giving me this anxiety. I was one step away from homelessness and the anxiety burned every day, day in and day out. This all came from the fact that I was now a professional financial loser. In my mind and in the ego's mind that ripped on me daily, that's what qualified me as a financial loser. At this time as well, my escapism grew to a significant level when it came to gambling habits as well. This area of fuel for escapism was ignited at the time of my divorce years earlier and now reignited at this time from beef, brief gambling periods winning more and more money. I would double and even triple my paycheck immediately one weekend, yet other times would lose it entirely within two days. I then did this weekly for hours on end, and it also included, of course, drinking and escapism. I was not a good gambler because alcohol itself blacked me out during my winning times, and I would awake to zero dollars and zero cents, and it made no sense to me why I kept doing it. I gambled trying to win bigger and bigger, all the while getting drunker and drunker, thus leading to having more and more continual small mall seizures every week as well. Missing sleep, I was a gambling, alcoholic epileptic that was looking to have another grand mall seizure any time now. I was a professional one on all three levels, a professional gambler, a professional alcoholic, a professional epileptic, yet also combined a professional loser. This lifestyle of being sucked into this type of addiction to escapism led to the more anxiety, depression, and living in constant fear for where I would be ending up tomorrow. Every day was a fear of tomorrow. All my tomorrows 
were filled with hopeless thoughts of once again obtaining a lost life I knew I would never regain. All the while, when suicide entered my mind and thinking about living with my parents at 34 years old, having to move in and losing everything, I still did not want to give up. The fear of these thoughts, the anxiety of these thoughts never stopped. When tomorrow arrived and became a new day, they were all fueled through lost anxiety. I had lost the ability to fight back. The anxiety crippled me. The drinking took my life from me. Any thought and any dream of having a life again. I was either very, very briefly rich with much cash in my pocket from the prior evening's wins, or I was dead broke. This was a constant battle back and forth that fueled this anxiety, this stress, this depression, and this fear of death. This took over at this stage, giving me a life I no longer wanted to live, especially with the epilepsy growing worse. I grew into a scary normality of being an epileptic alcoholic addict who was shaking at night from anxiety, alcohol withdrawal, and fear. I was leading a lifestyle that shook me to no end. I looked in the, fridge, I looked in the refrigerator at times and had butter, a natty light, beer, and frozen food. And that was it. Enough to get by, enough to drink, yet not enough to have any type of normal life ever again. I began shooting out of bed so early in the morning, knowing I had to find a job, I had to make money, I had to pay the rent, I had to eat, and of course, as an addict, I had to drink. Knowing I had to make money, knowing I had to pay the rent, knowing I had to stop eating food in the store as I shopped and not paying for it as well. This became a normal habit, buying $20 worth of food while eating another 20 around the store, hoping not to get caught because I couldn't afford it. And moreover, knowing I had to stop living a lifestyle of this insanity that I knew would lead to death. I had to stop everything I was doing and become a new being. Had to, had to, had to. I kept saying it, I kept living it, but I didn't keep doing it. The had to's never started. As I had to start learning and start implementing change from all my mistakes in life. I knew I had to do so by learning from hardships and listening to the instructions from my heart for change through gratitude and thankfulness. I had to have intent to change, intent to grow and intent to become someone new. How I was living and who I had become was no longer connected to happiness, nor was it connected to living another day on this earth. Everything was fueled by pain and anxiety from my thoughts that continued to become my actions, of which flowed into daily repetition. And this is how and why my life in all areas began spiraling out of control and never stopped. This struggle was real, so real and so continual that my thoughts revolved around survival, not growth. I was living day in and day out in order to make ends meet. Positive change and growing out of this insanity became harder and harder as my life became worse and worse. The old me lived in an angry, fear-fueled world of vindictiveness for where and how my life had ended up. This old me was never able to see the reality that I myself and my actions and decisions were to blame for where I was in life at this time. Instead, through the blurred vision of a life fueled by alcohol, of which completely disabled my cognitiveness to common sense, my ability to see that alcohol was the reason for how and where I ended up in life was also lost. This common sense view was com completely inept due to years of alcohol, disabling my mental and emotional functioning to see clearly in life. I never knew what normality was again. Normality that used to be without alcohol. It had been so long since my addictions had taken over. This was my normality. All for the purpose of the ego's intent to maintain addiction through a thought-based fuel activity known as escapism. Every time I had just started getting my life in order, back in control, and back to somewhat of a normality, from my previous DUI, another DUI followed. This insanity went on for 11 years. This continued to happen every three years on the average. 
Every time I started getting back in the game, as I called it, and just started becoming financially stable once again, I blew it all. Over and over, I continued to blow it all again and again. Quote, how insane was this? Why do I keep doing this? End quote. I asked myself each and every time, followed by lost questioning fueled by excuses from the ego, such as, quote, why does this keep, ha why does this keep happening to me? Why me? End quote. The basic answer of which was alcohol. Yet basic inclusivity, inclusivities like this remained anonymous in my life. Each and every time I lost it all, my life collapsed. What this can and will do to anyone and did directly to me was drain me of all life and desire to live. The repetition of this insanity drained me of the will to live. After this third lesson in my life in the past six years with a third DUI now on my record, of which included jail time and failure in my life, I still continued pushing forward yet again and growing in life. This was the strongest part of me that was fueled by the heart. It was weak, but it was still strong to fight back and get on a normal path. I once again became financially stable and enough in my sale and had earned enough in my sales career to begin, begin getting my life in order. I began pushing myself beyond the growing struggle and into a newfound form of normality when it came to success here in 2010, growing into 2011. I consistently grew beyond struggle and formed a new normality of financial success in my up and down life. I now had a prosperous job career that fell into my lap in 2011, and I worked actually in the restaurant and bar entertainment industry. I worked in a sales position for a digital marketing software platform company and sold trivia games in Carlsbad, California. My job was to sell this trivia software, trivia entertainment software to bars and use it as an entertainment that would keep patrons there longer. It was my dream come true. I cold called and warm called and followed up with the owners and or decision makers of bars and restaurants, all to help increase their sales and overall revenue through increasing drinking and alcoholism and returning patrons at their bar. Of course, they didn't use this word and I never did as well, but we joked about it often. I was increasing alcoholism in order to increase their profits. In simple terms, as I always joked and had been amazed how I attracted such a fantastic job with an awesome company for an alcoholic like myself, I always said, I'm in bar heaven. I didn't resist the fact that I was an alcoholic. I sadly actually started welcoming it with jokes, welcoming it at bars, welcoming it with humor on the phone, talking to bar owners all day, joking about it at the bars that I drank after work. What a way to get paid. That's what I started telling myself. I did this daily and I drank my check away at every bar. Every two weeks I would get paid. My check was gone in a few days through drinking, through gambling. I struggled still. 60, 70, 80,000, six figures coming up. I was there. I was making the money, but blowing the money even faster. That was the insanity. Whether I made 20,000 a year or 100,000 a year, it was gone. I welcomed this job and financial opportunity with open arms and a full pitcher or two of beer every evening. I was right in the midst of this chaotic alcoholic lifestyle and didn't even know it or recognize it. As for me, this was normal. This was the normal way I knew how to live it live life by doing my job and keeping patrons there longer through the trivia games they played. I was one of those patrons. I was one of those alcoholics. I was one of those escape artists. I knew it, lived it, and loved it. Keeping them drinking more, spending more, and getting more obliterated as I did in order to increase their tab each and every time would add to the bar owner's pocket. I knew many bar owners in Oceanside and the surrounding areas and frequenting them week weekly with trivia events. Drinking and driving, I joined different pool league, dart league, bowling league, attended all types of different bars, and constantly never stopped the drinking and driving. 
This was all intertwined with my sales job, and this was my life now. This was actually what I now saw as the law of attraction taking place to exactly what my crazed alcoholic mind wanted and therefore attracted in life. I welcomed it with humor and jokes on the phone all day in sales, continually saying, I'm an alcoholic and love it. Cheers. I admitted it every day. This is how I lived in total denial of any problems with addiction and alcoholism. To everyone and anyone around me that wanted to drink and wanted to party, I again was all in, all in on escapism. I was there to escape with anyone who drank to the extreme level that I did every evening, or for some of those unknown others, drank even more than I did. I did an excellent job at keeping patrons there longer, drinking more and spending more, and doing a great job in my role in the sales. I increased revenue and increased alcoholism at bars and got paid well for it. This was my job, and this is how I began living in total and complete denial. I was a functioning alcoholic. I was a functioning gambling artist. I was a functioning escape artist and could never admit any of these. My sales job role was to build relationships with bar owners and keep their patrons drunk, drinking, and happy and continually coming back for more and more fun every week and even every day for some of them. This six-figure job rolled into more and more and I began to promote alcoholism as part of my life that ruled my life. I loved it, joked about it, and began drinking my way into the highest level of alcoholism I had ever been in in my life, thus all the while being fueled by my denial over the next two years. This pattern of addiction to alcohol and addiction to escapism, to not being able to face life on life's terms, all led to a stagnant growth of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over, playing the same, same trivia games while getting to the same level of drunkenness every evening and especially every 72 hour weekend period, I was obliterated. The weekends were a blur. They seemed fun. They seemed like a time period I would never forget when I attended Padre games, Charger games, pool leagues, dart leagues, bowling leagues, everything. I couldn't remember though. It was all a big blur. Extremes such as this took me to a normality of having the shakes and having the withdrawals many mornings. They got worse and worse. These episodes that seemed common after a while were known as delirium tremens. These began slowly showing up monthly, then weekly, then commonly as they edged their way into this brainwashed, alcohol-induced mindset of a psychotic normality. I then began living the mornings waking up with the shakes and a bed soaked full of sweat again and again, of which many times I had to check to confirm in a very sick way, is this sweat or is it urine? I would ask myself and even smell the sheets to confirm. And yes, 99% of the time, it was a massive pool of sweat. Yet, was this a problem? Well, it didn't bother my alcohol-filled mind as I look back on it. I simply got to the bathroom, threw up two or three times per week, took a shower, and went to work. That was normality. I actually saw nothing wrong with this life pattern of full-blown alcoholism. I simply accepted it, everything that went along with it, as it had taken so long to develop. It was so slow, day by day, that by the time it became a problem, I didn't know it was a problem. This slow process was now my routine lifestyle of normality. Even when this normal included more sweat and more puke, I didn't think it was a problem. This was all based on my level of partyism and how much I drank and how drunk I got the evening prior. Nor no, no normal should be lived like this. I later knew it, but at this time, I didn't know it. But I, because I knew no other option. This was my life. This lifestyle revolved only around the past me. The future me, the new me, could not grow in this lifestyle. It was revolving around the alcoholic me. It was all focused on the old me, and it was all I could dream about living, doing, and being someday soon when my hopes became reality and I wanted to own a bar. 
That was actually my dream for years in this lifestyle. Even with the DUIs, even with the failure, I wanted to own a bar. The passion to own a bar was not about the money. It was about the freedom and the lifestyle I could lead. Living in the dream of constant party scene around me was all I could think about and plan while still working in the corporate sales world. Free beer, free partying, all part of a business I would own someday. That was my dream. Then I crashed. Physically, mentally, and emotionally. Overnight, the dream was over. The bar never happened. Nor did anything close or related. In fact, the dreams became a nightmare in the blink of an eye. Now I was stuck in a constant, willful program of terror fueled by alcohol, addiction, and escapism. A daily program that could, would, and now did rule my life, and ruled it for years without me knowing it. It ruled my life into ruling, into, it ruled my life into a ruling of living a life of hell through addiction. This functioning alcoholic entrepreneurial dream was truly created without knowing what the poison of death intended for fueling a vehicle, that being alcohol, had in store for me if I kept fueling my life with it. In the end, my alcoholic dream diluted reality and evolved into this nightmare overnight. I had a dream sales job that provided an income that could have brought this dream and very obtainable goals into reality. Yet I drank everything built on foundation and the strength out of my life. Everything left in my life was fueled off alcohol. So everything I made in life went toward that fuel of alcohol. Hidden underneath it, the fuel of escapism. I thought, I wished, I dreamed, and I even fantasized about the life I was soon to have in this magical world. I dreamed of living this dream in the near future until this one evening when this described crash occurred. My dream life flashed into a nightmare the night of my nearly fatal car crash and fourth DUI in ten and a half years. No level of insanity could compare to how my life had ended up to this evening of October 9th, 2012. My gambling addiction had taken off to an extreme level for the past two years, a gambling addiction fueled by alcohol. At this point in life, I realized that every part in life eventually comes to an end. A relationship, a job, a cycle, a habit, even an addiction. All and everything comes to an end. And from this fact, I realized how blessed I was to see and say that once again, it did not include my death. Yet this was a cycle of insanity I should have ended nearly 10 years ago to the day upon my first DUI. Still, I amazed myself at this point how insane I had let my life become now. I could see that one after the other mistakes that built up and built up were causing more and more chaos and more and more insanity in my life. This insanity also included my battle with epilepsy. The story in and of itself is insane. The multiple seizures I had during this time from 2009 to 2011 did not deter me from drinking. In fact, they added to more of it. I finally woke to the fact that if I didn't stop now, and if I didn't change my mind and change my life at this very moment of now, as I awoke in jail during the early morning of October 10th, 2012, I would no longer have a life to live. This was the crossroad of life versus death that I came to. This past of financial success and money happiness overlapped my extreme failure and hardship that I had now lived through and grew through in life, a life that would be completely over. Over through homelessness, over through being institutionalized, and or over through death if I continue to drink. I would sooner rather than later be one of them or all of the above, those being the homelessness and the dead that I saw along the way. I would be one of them if I drank. One of them who I saw on the streets off and on for years. One of them who I said I would never be. 
one of them from my past life, who I was close, a close friend with from my past life, who later heard, who I later heard had died from addiction. Yes, one of them that could and would soon be me if I didn't change at this point. The passing of this one close friend years earlier, combined with the many of them I saw passing along the way, were all now in one way or another becoming me. The new I, the I of which I thought I would never be, well, it was now me. This insanely addicted me. The fear was real. So was this lifestyle. I thought I would be successful. I thought I would maintain the strength to drink. I thought I would maintain normality. I thought it all until a blurred vision took over and I awoke lost, trapped in the bar and trapped in the bar of lifestyle. Until I, a blurred vision took over and I awoke lost and trapped in the bar lifestyle. All in an addiction lifestyle to alcoholism, fueled daily by denial and escapism. Life was never a problem during this time. Living was the problem. Living an alcoholic lifestyle. Being one of them on the streets was soon to be my role. I spoke to many of them in jail. As I awoke and sobered up in jail, I learned from their stories as if I was in a college prep course for life being taught by professors. As these were all professors in their mind and in their own life. They knew everything they would say. Professors that wouldn't shut up about the streets, their life, who else is to blame, and what they're going to do and become when they get out. They had this repetition of insanity, of blaming others, and feeling they would be back on their feet and stay that way when they got out this time. Of which I also learned in listening to them, this was the insanity I had to stop and stop now. It would not happen to them and it would not happen to me. And, and as they, their stories led to the fact that they would return every six to 12 months. Many of them were in there 10, 20, 30 times. Yet still I listened. It was a simple task that helped me learn and grow. If I wanted to learn what not to do, they were the perfect teachers for me in this beginning stage of growth. I did want to to be one of them. I did not want to be one of them living in the park, classifying the park bench as my home address. So I listened. So I learned. So I took mental, emotional, and spiritual notes. And so I began to grow. As knowingly, if I did not listen and learn, this would soon be me. I would become one of them begging on the street corners. That would soon be my job. Being one of them as an addict and an alcoholic was soon to be my label. That, quote, it'll never be me, end quote, attitude, is what fueled me into being nearly homeless and one of them. And being one of them, lost within, was soon to be my permanent role in life. I had to wake up. Today, this time, this six weeks that I spent in jail was my awakening. Quote, Listen to experience. Listen by using stillness, calmness, and quietness. Listen to the stories of others and learn. Listen to life and grow. Simply talk less and listen more. The quietness is the fuel for learning. These are the first steps to growth and success in life. Learn now and grow now. End quote. I found it intriguing and very spiritually educational for me to hear, listen, and learn from their stories. By doing so, I created a new open-minded view on life within me as I walked with a soulfully aware spirit now. Yes, even in jail, one spirit within me awoke and thankful for my new life outside of me here in jail. Thus, with this fuel of gratitude, I continue to grow daily here. And from here, I wanted to learn more and grow more. What I awoke to in this time period was the reality of how much I did want to end my life now. What I awoke to in this time period was the reality of how much I did not want to end my life now. What I awoke to also was how close I had been 
to becoming one of them on the streets and how that would have ended my life if I did so. It made sense now. I could see with sobriety and clarity in my first two, three, four weeks. This all made sense. I was strong. And instead of ending my future life through present suicide and or continual drinking lifestyle until I achieved that point of death, I chose to end my past life and begin a new life. This being another life. That word, another. And other life. That being anything, anywhere, any path other than the road I had been traveling on for years. If I got back on this road again, death would surely follow shortly thereafter. The more and more I spoke, asked questions, and listened to fellow inmates and their stories, inmates who were literally back in jail for their 30th, 40th, and 50th times, those most experienced is who I talked to. Those is who I wanted to learn from. The more I saw and realized and grew from the fact that this was me at this time, the stronger I became. I was right on their own path when they started losing control in their own life, right when they chose to stay out of control, right when they chose to stay out of control in life and began to end life in and of itself. But no longer was it me and I woke up at this point, yet still by asking these questions and hearing their stories, I knew this would never be me again. It hit home and hit home hard. If I ever did fall off and fall back, I would be permanently placed in my own prison. Now I saw through 100% sober eyes and felt with a sober heart. Right now, at this point, there are no U-turns allowed. I had to completely control, alt, delete, I called it. Reset my mind, reset my life. And that is what I did. Being in the present moment of now in this locked up chamber of jail called the Vista Detention facility in Vista, California, I was placed here for exactly a six-week period from October 10th to November 20th, 2012. I found this to be my new home address. And from this point forward, I chose to love it here. Yes, I chose to love the moment of now, quote, now, end quote, being a moment of being locked up, being incarcerated, and being in jail. I had to fall in love with my life no matter where my life was at this very moment. Love, I found, is fueled by acceptance. Here I learned to choose to live in acceptance and knowing that acceptance is the fuel for growth. Yes, I chose to accept it. I chose to connect with it. I chose to learn from it. I chose to live in the moment of now while being in jail. I chose to live every moment in every way possible through appreciation of my current situation. This was a situation which gave me time to think, time to understand, time to forgive my past self for my past mistakes, and time to be grateful. This also gave me time to do the math in life. Do the math for how much time I had wasted based on alcohol, and do the math on how much time I still had left in my life to make, live, and have a new life once again. And during this calculating process, because of my love for numbers, I had time to calculate the exact and total time to the minute that I would be in jail. For some reason at this time, this voice within told me I must know the exact time I'm going to be in jail. This then quickly became a situation I found myself deeply appreciative of and being in when I found it was a jail lockdown time for me of six weeks total exactly. I then developed even more appreciation when I did the math and found it was 42 days total, which I grew even further through gratitude and thankfulness when I found that 42 days times 24 hours was 1,008 hours total. I would be in jail total, just over 1,000 hours. I chose then to love it and love my new life to the 1,000th power. I began repeating this over and over. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you to the 1,000th power. From this growing appreciation for anything and everything I found in this temple of doom 
on the outside of me called jail is where my past life ended, where that suicide of the old me happened. Yet not physically, but emotionally and mentally, I ended that life spiritually, all through a spiritual power of awakening within and listening to that new voice that was fueling me with appreciation. I became appreciative that I now lived in a place where room and board costs were covered. I was given a temporary home where food was free, medical needs were supplied, and all my accommodations were given to me to live, were given me, were given to me to live, and I could work on my sobriety. Even though weekly AA and church meetings that were offered as well were there, I had to work on myself, for myself, through myself, by myself, in myself, all as a part of my stay. I knew it now and was appreciative of it now to the 1,000th power. Everything was good on the outside for me when it came to food, shelter, and security of my life. Yet the daily and hourly demonic battle on the inside of me that I faced with guilt, sobriety, anger, resentment, these were all new related emotions of hell that I had to face head on now here in jail. Yet here in this sanctuary of insanity that I lived in firsthand is where I found the fuel to change my life, the fuel of change through appreciation, a fuel of change through love, a fuel of change through a whole new life. Here I was surrounded on the outside of me with the vampires of my past life. Vampires working to suck the life out of me by giving me guilt, giving me trips of anxiety, and working so hard to bring me back to my past life and bring back my past life into my present life. Yes, this was my lockdown time, but this was also my time for spiritual growth and developing a whole new love for life. I did so, and in doing so, here on the inside of me became my rehab for a newfound love I had found for this newfound life. October 10th, 2012 was my start date for my six week rehab, my six week lockdown, my six week break through my six week transition and my six week foundation building process. Here and now, I began developing a new foundation for building a whole new life. This process started by finding a way out through finding a way in. Once again, this process of transition started by finding a way out of my old life by finding a way in through my new life. A process of connecting the heart to the mind, eliminating a mouthful of excuses in between and fueling myself with the connectivity of self-love. I then began to find this process was one of simplicity. The simplicity of a few steps that included awareness, acceptance, forgiveness, and positive affirmations of abundance for overcoming any problem, any situation, and any obstacles I had in life. Here in jail, through these steps, I found that I could overcome even the worst of times in life. I found this by connecting the dots of thoughts about where I was and what I was truly in control of in my life at this time. I gained the mental and emotional ability to realize that I could not change what was on the outside of me as I was in lockdown. But I could change. But I could change what was taking place and going on inside of me, all because, again, I was in lockdown. I had control of my inside. The inner being in me had awoke and gave me control mentally, emotionally, connecting the dots spiritually. I could overcome my past inner demons by matching their turmoil with acceptance. Acceptance of who I was, who I had become, and who I now have the opportunity to, to grow into in life. I could overcome this past path of mistakes and hardships by connecting the dots of thoughts through awareness thus giving ease of stress and guilt to my present mind through forgiveness. I could begin a new path by not fighting the old path. This was, this is what I saw and this is what I lived and this is what I began to learn from in life in order to grow. 
by accepting the past path through less resistance and growing from the mistakes, I could feel a stream of gratitude begin to flow from my heart into my life and begin and, be, and being able to use this as fuel for personal growth and self-development. A stream of gratitude began to flow from my heart into my new life and I was able to use this as fuel for personal growth and self-development. Through this understanding, I gained thoughtful insight leading to a path of powerful connectivity with growth for how the mind works in and grows through forgiveness. This was my new fuel, the fuel of forgiveness. An understanding that grew of how I should now accept the past through a consistent mindset of growth versus a vindictive rage can and will help me grow daily. That is what I found, and that is what I implemented in my life. This mindset started with a few simple steps. Steps that included using the six-week period for growth by looking back on and learning from my decisions in life that put me in jail. I built steps that included reviewing my past life situations and the decisions I made that later negatively affected my life. I analyzed the reasoning I thought I had back then during my decision-making patterns at those times. I used a deep, detailed an analogy for the reasons I used for turning these types of mental and emotional decisions into actual physical actions in my life. Yes, I had to review why I acted so quickly without thinking. Yet now, and through then, and this process of growing, meditation, awareness, and prayer is what I implemented. MAP, M-A-P. Meditation and manifestation, awareness and attitude, prayer and positive thinking. I began being able to see the foundation of these reasons were all based on selfish, narcissistic decision-making patterns, all based around what I wanted more of in life. And that was alcohol. That was partying. That was gambling. That was addiction. That was escapism. That is what the old me wanted. Yet now, I journal my thoughts and my feelings for why I felt decisions like this were made at that time for the actions I took. Journaling began helping me to see how I thought of no one but myself when making them. It helped me see how I was to blame for making my life worse. No one else, just me. I then began writing them down and reviewing the outcomes and consequences. From here, I entered steps of beginning to be acceptful of who I was and why I made those decisions. I then learned to forgive myself, that being my self, my old self, and my now old past decisions that this self made. Past decisions that I found through my research and homework included losing over $1 million of equity, cash, financial investments, financial investments, and future growth opportunities, and literally millions of dollars total in the future if I looked at what my life could have been. Yet I didn't want to focus on this could-haves or should-haves or would-haves. But I had to understand that these decisions influenced by alcohol cost me millions in my life. Yet now, there was no more looking back. I had to use these steps and this homework over the next six weeks as a complete closure on my past life. I had to put to rest the could-haves from my past life. As I now saw that by using them over the past three years, this was the main fuel for my addiction. By living in a life of coulda, shouldas, and would'ves, I was focused on escapism and lost my life. I had to now use these steps as closure to my past. I laid to rest my past and began doing so by being thankful for my mistakes. I began doing so by understanding the reasoning and the outcome for my mishaps, along with these daily steps my daily path in life became easier. It became easier to handle, easier to live, and easier to understand through a sober mindset. 
I became a new being in a life that was more appreciative for all the success and happiness I had, past tense, had in my past life as well. Not to be angry for what I lost, because I found that that anger will never leave me. If I lived in anger daily for what I lost and blamed others, I would never grow. I would never be happy again. So I must be thankful for the life I lived, what I lived through, and even be thankful for what I lost. Otherwise, I wouldn't be alive to this day. And if I lived in a lost mindset, my life would be lost and I would be dead. I understood why I was here now in jail and why I had lost everything in life. The why came from me growing personally, growing emotionally, and growing spiritually. The why came from me knowing that I had to do this in order for me to evolve into a new man. I had to incorporate this understanding into my new life, along with being appreciative for the success, the happiness, and the love from others I also had at one time in my past life. The wonderful marriage, the financial abundance and growth, I had it all, yet chose to lose it all. It was a choice, not a blame on others. I lost that. I did not want to point the finger out. I had to look inward. I lost it all. But now, by learning how to be appreciative and understanding of how I literally chose to lose it all through my addiction, I then opened a new door of growth a new corridor in my life, and I could see, feel, and hear a new beginning. The seed was planted years before. The water was now fertilizing it in the soil of my new life. I was ready to grow, and thus started my new life. I saw, experienced, and learned how failure is the fuel for success. Yes, failure is a part of life. Failure is this fuel for success that I always needed. I had been so successful in life for nearly 15 years that without failure, I was actually lost. I didn't know both worlds. I didn't understand them. From this process, I then developed the strength to say, thank you for my past. I then developed the strength to be appreciative of both areas and both sides of my life. For without one, I could not have the other and I would not be alive to this day. I now knew I had to fail in order to succeed. I saw the light of how failure could and would fuel success and happiness when used right, in the right way. Reviewing with an open mind and an all-knowingness that the reason I was where I was to this day in Vista County Jail was all my own fault. I had to accept it it was literally just a few miles down the road from where I grew up years earlier as a child. This meant to beism in my life hit home, deeply home. I had attended the same courts when I was 18, 17, and even 16 for minor possessions of alcohol. Those tickets were paid by my loving mother. Those tickets I never accepted as a problem. Four minor possessions of alcohol, and I still never woke up. Yet the next 15 years, was abundance, growth, and success. Graduation, marriage, wonderful job, everything. But I chose to lose it all through my addiction and not being strong enough to handle admitting I had a problem. It was no one else's fault. It was my own life, my own decisions, my own actions, and my own results that put me here. For those that I saw in jail and basically interviewed in jail to learn about their life, and what I should not do in the future in order to stay out of jail, I also realized that their blame went out. My blame was now going in. This was a huge difference. This is how I grew. I was able to see others with their one finger being pointed out as they blamed everyone else in their life for their mistakes and their outcomes. Their stories were intense their stories were wild, some fabricated, I know, but everything was her fault, his fault, their fault, the system's fault, the judge's fault. Everything that put them there was not their fault. The insanity of these stories really woke me to no end. I was understanding that this is what I sounded like weeks prior, months prior, years prior, blaming everyone else. 
I saw that reverse on me. If I had one finger pointed out blaming others, I then saw I had to have three fingers pointed back at me with that same hand. That is how I live now. I understood that. I realized it at this time through my research and studying and coming across this fact from Dr. Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer changed my life by helping me understand that I had to look within in order to look without. Without blame and without looking at others for where I was in life. We must look at ourselves first before blaming others. Dr. Dyer helped me to see and understand that when we have that one finger pointed out with blame elsewhere in our life, we actually have those three fingers pointed back at our own self. Connectivity like this for my research and through literal and through literally sitting down with inmates and interviewing them and the cellmates I had in my jail block, it awoke me and it helped me to understand what I was looking at. I was looking at a mirror image when I interviewed them of how I was. All of this helped me grow. It helped me to understand what they had been through while understanding their block of growth through blame in their own mindset and how they would be back again and again until they died. This is how I grew. Quote, We are where we are today for who... Quote, We are where we are today for who we were yesterday. We will be where we end up tomorrow for who we are today. Your decisions to continue being to yesterday's tomorrow or today's future growth is all up to you. End quote. Complacency and blame were no longer options. Both fueled each other and both brought me hardship and failure and placed me to where I was this day in jail. Thereby seeing the fact, I began to release past anger, release myself of former regret, and lift from my shoulders at this time all previous sorrow and blame. I did so by putting it all together in a package of forgiveness that shipped directly from my heart to the universe around me. The universe called my new life. I had to get it off my shoulders, get it off my back, and get it out of my life system. The blame was packaged and sent out. This package of forgiveness of my previous self and my decisions is what led to my true new self awakening here in jail. I had to connect the dots of thoughts and put them in my past. The dots of thoughts that blamed others and continually fueled my old self to live in a daily state of anger and resentment for years without even knowing it. By connecting these dots of thoughts, I grew spiritually in awareness. I grew mentally with less blame, and I grew emotionally by choosing emotions before emotions chose me. I grew emotionally on all levels through meditation, through prayer, and through forgiveness. Before the emotions that were programmed in me, such as anger and rage, to be ignited immediately took off, I was aware of them. I felt those feelings, but I did not let them act. I did not let them take control. I had blame and anger for how and where I felt I ended up in my present life. Yet I released them. I could not live in this state. I could not live in this mindset. And I could not live from the fuel that it gave me to be blaming and angry. I lived in these two states for years and nearly catastrophically ended my life because of my inability to take the blame and subside the anger. It was difficult as I had deep-seated hostility toward my biological father for not wanting me in his life for years in my adulthood and especially for not wanting to let my half-siblings know I even existed. In 2008, this incident occurred and it instilled anger and hostility. There was no reason for this as I saw him not wanting to be in my life or have my or have me in his life. I had anger in this area. I had anger toward losing multiple jobs. I had anger toward losing multiple relationships, including most of all my marriage to my high school girlfriend and how I ruined it. So I was definitely angry at myself. The anger fueled my life with resentment for being a failure as a man. The blame was easy to go out, yet blame was hardest to take in. With alcohol as a cover to this reality in my life, I never knew that this anger even existed. 
It was normality for me. It was every day. I was always a good-hearted person, joking and making others laugh. But this anger was so covered up and so deep-seated in me through constant blame on what others on constant blame on others for what was going wrong in my life that I truly never knew it even existed. Alcohol would not let anger's cover be revealed. It was seated in me, by me, through me, around me, attracting this continual lifestyle of chaos on all levels, on a daily basis. It was fueling my life with blame on everyone else for my mistakes and my mishaps. It was formed and executed by the ego in such a strategic manner that it was never revealed. The ego had a constant cover-up and constant excuses and constant pointing blame at everyone when things went wrong in my life, which was always for the past few years. It revolved around creating a daily form of excuses to drink as well. When blame went out, alcohol went down. When excuses came up, shots went down. It revolved in a hidden pattern of insanity by attracting the same problems that never seemed to be resolved and never went away, so the drinks increased while the problems grew as well. The alcohol was fuel for the mistakes. The alcohol was fuel for the problems. The alcohol was fuel for fa failure. The alcohol was fuel for ruining and nearly ending my life. This is what I woke up to. Here now, in jail. Before, I could never see that alcohol ran my decision-making patterns on all levels like this. I could never see myself blaming someone and something else in my past as being wrong. It's what I did every time. The blame I gave them was my only option. It was a blame on them for where I ended up. Alcohol covered everything with blame for how and where I ended up. Alcohol was the mistake I made. Alcohol was my life. Alcohol was my failure. Alcohol was everything that put me in jail at this time for my fourth DUI. There was no one else to blame for this. Alcohol was the reason I lost my life of success and happiness. I lost my marriage and lost everything as it covered it up with addiction and blame. Every failure I had was covered by this addiction and blame. Yet now without this fuel in my beginning, in the, yet now without this fuel in my beginning of sobriety, the fog then lifted. I began to see how blaming the past for where I was in my present was no longer an option. That is how I looked at it. And this is how I knew I had to change and evolve and revolve into a whole new life. In my first few weeks of sobriety in jail, I began to think more clearly. I began meditation. I began prayer. I began interaction with others on a positive note in order to learn and grow. I began to see the system as a place I had to be in order to grow and a place I never wanted to be. I began to see it more clearly. I began to see more clearly as well as I began feeling emotions. Literally, as drinking covered up feelings, sobriety showed me how feelings and emotions actually were, both good and bad. It felt good to connect with these emotions, even on the hardest level. Again, it was connecting me with life. There was nothing to hide. And now, at the, and now with this new clear insight, I began to see how this very hard emotional time for me could, would, and will be my beginning for my growth and healing process. Quote, healing begins with feeling. End quote. Healing begins through tears of pain at night for where I ended up in life. That is how my healing began. Healing began through feeling the tears of sorrow for how I destroyed such a wonderful life and hurt so many others along, along the way. Healing began through prayer and asking forgiveness from those I had hurt due to my past addictions and related decisions. All these steps I began to see feel and now know with confirmation that they were a part of my healing process, a process that I needed to go through and grow through in sobriety. I saw now and realized now how escapism from reality 
and life was bringing pain, bringing me hardship, and instituting regret into the lives of those closest to me. Regret they had for trying to help me. Regret they, they felt for trying to always do more and more and more in my life, but more was never enough. The more help I received, the more help I needed. I was similar to those addicted to the escapism that always needed help, received help, but never helped themselves take their life to the next level. Now during this shift, it was the end. I had an end for it by ending up in jail. And in the end, regret for even being a part of my life is what I saw many of these people that were closest to me feeling when they felt the pain of trying to help me. I saw it now and felt it now as I obtained and maintained sobriety in every moment of the now. But the life I was living for years prior was something I could not immediately end here in jail. I could not just turn it off in my head as it ran off the fuel of death. The alcohol was the fuel for death, and now that it was out of me, it showed me where I ended up because of it. The life I had ran off alcohol in order to live until I died. That was the scariest part I realized. I would have been dead a month, two months, six months, even physically in a few years. I saw many die around me and end up in jail, and I was going to be one of them constantly in life if I did not remain sober. Jail was the most difficult emotional and personal time for me in my life. Up to this point, the past lived in my life. Up to this point, the past lived in my life. The past ruled my life, and the past was my life in a circular motion of daily regrets and pain called insanity. Yet every time I used the actions of asking for forgiveness and now continuing to work hard to accept full responsibility for my past decisions and outcomes, that being in and of itself the past that put me here, I then began to grow. Then, day by day and moment by moment, it grew better. It got better. I felt better, little by little. So, so slowly and so painfully did each day go by that I didn't even recognize or acknowledge how well I was doing in this lockdown rehab facility called jail. Day by day, week by week, I grew. For the first time, I saw, felt, and lived what the fuel of forgiveness can and will do in my life. I also saw the long-term benefits by knowing how I can and will keep it in my life in order to fuel my life even during the most difficult times as I was experiencing here in jail. By forgiving myself first for past decisions and past mistakes, I felt healing take place then and there. Then by also forgiving those even farther back in my life when my past path went wrong, whether it was their fault or not, I could feel a weight lift off my shoulders each and every time. I was able to let the past go I had to let go and let God take over, is what I learned in AA meetings over the years. It's what I learned in AA meetings in jail, but finally incorporated this step in my life right now in jail. I was able to give myself forgiveness, give my decisions forgiveness, give my past outcomes forgiveness, and even give where I was at this time in jail and in lockdown forgiveness. This forgiveness was the fuel to happiness. The insanity I could see that this sounded like to others as I tried to talk to people about this, there was no way they could understand it. How could I be happy for being in jail? How could I be happy for losing millions of dollars, houses, homes, cars, a wife, everything? How could I be happy? These people asked me that, and finally I shut up. I understood not to talk to everyone about this, not to open up to everyone. Only the conscious awoke that I knew would understand it because physically and idealistically revolved around money, their life and the financial success is all they wanted. When I explained losing it all and how happy I had become, there was no understanding. This is deep because I was not forgiving someone from my past in particular. 
I was forgiving myself. And I understood it. And now I knew and understood that not, not everyone would understand it. Forgiving myself for not being woke enough in the past to handle all responsibility for where and how my life ended up. It was me. It was the new me recognizing that the old me had to be forgiven. Forgiven for not knowing. Forgiven for not opening up. Forgiven for not being strong enough. Forgiven for being so blockheaded, as I was called many times. Stuck in my ways. Never changing. All or nothing. I heard those terms constantly in my past. Jail and lockdown brought me to my knees to ask forgiveness from my higher power and forgive my old self for holding me back from growth. Now it was time for me to put my old self on the shelf and continue to grow. There was nothing I could do to change the past now in the present moment of now. It was behind me. Thus, thus the past had passed. I had to let go. I had to let God take over, especially while in jail. There was nothing to do in jail but think. And besides think my way into insanity of blame, I thought, I prayed, I forgave myself, and I started a new life. I did not want to think with regret. I did not want to think in pain. I did not want to think in sorrow. This would all lead me to thinking my way into anger, and anger would fuel me to repeat the patterns that put me here. I saw it. I lived it. I loved it. Change. This is what I needed. This was all true in my past about what it did to me when I lived in that repetition. But without alcohol being there to fuel this anger while diluting clarity and consciousness, my past thought patterns began to lose their rule of fuel in my life. I repeat that. Without alcohol being there to fuel this anger while diluting clarity and consciousness, my past thought patterns began to lose their rule of fuel in my life. I began to think clearly through awareness knowing that in awareness, I was able to see and choose thoughts wisely. I had the strength to perceive and receive in life before deciding to act in life. Through the years and tears prior in my decision making, I randomly chose thoughts based on emotions and turned them into action without thinking clearly on the outcome. This path that I had lived in for the years prior always put me in an emotional lockdown for making the worst decisions due to lack of thought based on emotions. Yet now I took the necessary time to control my thoughts before deciding. Review the possible outcomes and choose wisely. That is what I had to do. All this versus having random emotional thoughts and feelings choose to be my action. All this versus having random emotional thoughts and feeling choose to be my action. When this would happen in my past, I had no control over my outcome. I, of which being the newfound spirit of growth within my new self, then took the power away from the emotional based ego and started the role of the new decision maker in my life. Making decisions no longer based on emotions, but based on purpose and positive outcome. I had clarity now and devotion to choosing through heart based through choosing through heart based on passion, a heart based on passion rather than a mind based on emotional reaction. All these emotionally based quick decisions, all they did was put me in a solitude state of anger and regret for the negative outcomes that followed. When I chose through the mind, my life was a mess. When I began choosing through the heart now, my life flowed with abundance and happiness. This insanity and this routine that I lived in never stopped for years, all until I finally woke up and grew up here in jail. Upon awakening, I had now become my own leader of decisions and outcomes. I now held my new self responsible, no matter what the turnout brought to me in life, good or bad. This was a life pattern change I chose with purpose based on my new understanding that, quote, what I choose to act on is what I will become in life, end quote. All choices from this point forward in my life then became my responsibility. That is my ability to respond. 
I now held myself solely responsible and my outcome based on this ability to respond to all events, all decisions I made, and all their outcomes in my life. Quote, Choose, decide, act, do, be, and repeat with positivity daily. Whatever I chose to think and chose to act on in the past was based all on my past. I never thought about my future. My present decision making was based on emotions fueled by alcohol and blame. My present that led me here to my present awakening. And by doing so, by following this pattern for years and by living so, there was never hope for future growth. This is the why and the way my life ran for years that led to failure. It was all based on the path of insanity. Before this spiritual awakening took place in my life, my actions were based on emotions of anger, hostility, and rage for all my own personal mistakes in life. This was the insanity lifestyle that put me in jail for the fourth time in a period of a decade in my life. Yet now, what broke this pattern in my life by living in jail was having no option but to slow down. I had to face a slow, purposeless lifestyle of a dull daily routine. Every inmate just had one goal to look forward to in their locked up, locked in, locked out, and locked down lifestyle. That goal being their release date. And many who I spoke with had vindictive feelings, patterns, anger, rage, and even plans to get people back for why they ended up there. I blame myself by seeing this and experiencing it. Instead of letting my old self bring me down, I focused on my new self, fueling a whole new outlook on life. I developed a routine to use my entirely open calendar in life here in jail to its full benefit. A routine that entailed taking time to look at my life, review my life, and with my new spirit of gratitude in life, I began to focus on being thankful for life. This is what jail gave me. Here I found how to slow down through meditation, awareness, and prayer, and began living a new life. I found how the human mind works when it comes to processing thought patterns. I began to be able to truly slow down in life and not resist the negative, but instead welcome it. This became the key step to my growth. Welcome the negative, acknowledge it, be thankful for it, learn from it, process it, grow from it. It soon became a seed for me for the positive to grow. I had to break the pattern, I had to break the mold, I had to break through with clarity in order to break through to my new life. I knew I was breaking out of my shell in life. I could feel it. This newfound fuel of clarity that awoke in me helped me to see the world around me that I had created. It was a disastrous world of chaos in the past that led me here, but I saw a whole new world around me. The opportunity was abundant and bountiful. I loved it. I lived it. I felt it. I prayed for it. It was the new me. I had a newfound strength through enlightenment to now look at my faults and accept them as fuel for growth. It helped me to see how I had been handling my life and how and why it turned out into a such catastrophic turmoil. This all because I was living a lifestyle of insanity. I had to accept these facts. I had been repeating my fact, I had been repeating my past mistakes my entire life, and I had to accept it now. By living in my past life of turmoil, blame, and regret, I would never get out of it. All this awoke in me. And now by knowing so and doing so, I then became so. For years, the insanity never stopped until now. And from there, I broke through to my new life by not letting my old life hold me back. I was now stronger through the heart by living with heart every day. Yes, once again, even in jail. I broke through with this newfound clarity that there are other ways to handle matters besides through vindictive anger. Anger which was fueled through the poison of alcohol that was going to kill me. 
This insanity I had been living in through this fuel had been going on for years. I had become the past by being fueled by the past and kept living in the past and maintaining my past lifestyle. And by doing so, the past continued to win. The past continued to become me. And the past continued day in and day out to rule me. I realized this fact in jail now and began to realize through awareness there was one main rule to growth. That rule, quote, what we focus on, we become. For the next six weeks, I focused on reading, educating myself, and forgiving my past nour- nourishing and forgiving my past by nourishing my present with daily gratitude. Every time I ate, I was thankful. Every time I awoke, I was thankful. Every time I heard anger and rage from others, I was thankful. Every time I was unable to call out because I didn't have enough money to use the phone in jail, I was actually thankful. I had to learn from it and grow at this point. I accepted the past in order to grow into a whole new future. I saw the same in so many others as well as I witnessed amazing transformation in drug addicts, alcoholics, and both that came into jail. They transformed in weeks right in front of me. They transformed into a whole new person living a whole new healthy life as they sobered up in jail and remained off drugs and remained off alcohol. It was amazing the transformation I saw. Still, even though I saw some inmates found ways to get the drugs and make the alcohol in jail, a large percentage had to accept the only path there was here in jail was that path of sobriety. Then in doing so and being so by living without addiction, without escapism, without drugs, without the alcohol, even without cigarettes and anything along these lines available, I saw many partake in this transformation by knowing no other option. This was my first enlightenment to living in a mindset focused on one option, health, personal health, physical health, mental health. All of this was my next step. I spoke to some of the inmates who said they did this routinely. It blew my mind, but at the same time, it expanded my mind. That's what it meant for me to understand by expanding my mind and listening to these stories about how inmates every six to 12 months would end up back here. They actually loved it and they needed it. Meaning they would come into jail for a few months, sober up, work out, eat right, get healthy, gain weight, feel good, and even look good, then go back onto the streets and start all over again. They didn't do it on purpose, of course, but their routine lifestyle of insanity repeated itself every three months, six months, nine months, year. But their routine lifestyle put them back here so frequently it was crazy for me to understand this but when I did I was scared straight literally I saw the kids from the show and the events that they do called scared straight come in as well they were looking at me as I was looking at inmates 30 years earlier in junior high and high school going to these programs seeing the inmates here now I was one of them When drugs and alcohol entered their life and took over their life as felons and other people who ended up in jail, it gave them no other option but to be ruled for life through addiction. Many gave up on life, just as I did. Each and every time, they began making horrible decisions to put them right back in jail. A few even told me how ending up in jail for the winter time was perfect timing for them in life. It was a warm, clean, and routine environment. Three meals a day, medical needs covered, everything. That's what they needed to get their heads straight off drugs, alcohol, and living a street survival lifestyle. Even my celly, surfer Brad, even said routinely, I'm on vacation. With his sarcastic humor that he played on me daily, inmates like him were there dozens of times as they knew no other option in their life but to repeat the routine of self-destruction by ending up in jail on a routine basis. Some of these inmates gave me stories of how they were top money makers, top drug dealers, top ballers, and went on with story after story of how they had the most money, the most bling, and the most of everything. All of them were in the same boat as I was here in jail. 
They were broke, addicted, alone, depressed, and in pain. Many even worse, as they were homeless as well, and had nowhere to go when they got out. This was insanity, and I knew it had to stop. When I would hear these stories, I couldn't believe their reasons for going back on drugs and or back on alcohol. Story after story, what I heard is what I built up a wall. What I heard is what built up a wall in me, one story, one brick at a time. I knew that drinking and falling off one more time for me was something I could no longer partake in. It was now not an option. During these weeks, as my new level of confidence grew, I knew if I ever drank again, I would die. Therefore, this place called jail, this place called prison in my own mind, was actually the best place for me to sober up and grow up. I did so by not knowing so, but was actually doing so and being so under the subconscious survival mechanism and programming purpose of my new self to change rather than die. Once again, under the subconscious survival mechanism and programming purpose of my new self, I was focused on changing rather than dying. I had to live here and grow here. That I knew now. Yet this home called jail is where I first turned down alcohol by using a legitimate excuse for which I should have been using for years, for even the two decades that I had been drinking. That excuse was epilepsy. Jail is where I first turned down alcohol to drink. I had never turned down alcohol for any reason other than being too hungover. Yet even with a hangover, I eventually drank. All up to this point in my life, on my first Saturday evening here in jail. Certain inmates would collect fruit from the plates of inmates throughout the week and actually ferment them in a large trash bag into juice. Then after six days of fermenting, this fruit turned into alcohol and the drinking evening arrived. This Saturday evening schedule was followed as there would be a weekly mandatory inspection and cleanup on Sundays by the sheriffs. So on my first Saturday evening being locked up, fellow inmates brought around the alcohol in a large trash bag and poured it into cups that other inmates had and expected everyone to drink it. But when it came to my turn, for their offer, I simply told them when they came up as they handed me the cup, I can't drink. I have epilepsy and I'll have a seizure. The jailmate bartender looked at me with ghostly eyes and a silence of bewilderment. Then he quietly asked, what, really? He simply asked this. I quickly and confidently rep replied, yes, I will have a seizure. He then, even more simplistically, turned around, dumbfounded, and walked away. It dawned on me at this very moment, as my new self said to my old self, quote, I should have been saying this, doing this, believing this, and living this way my entire life when I was asked to drink, End quote. It was a simple epiphany that I had at this very moment, on this first Saturday evening in jail. I just turned down a drink based on my past medical issues. So I had to ask myself, through myself, in myself, for myself, in my new self as it grew through this fuel of self-realization. The question was, why didn't I use this answer for the past 20 years as I battled epilepsy? It now made sense to my new self, which literally upset my old self even more right then and there. I saw the battle going on in my mind. It was the ego versus the spirit heart versus mind, and love versus fear. This old mind of mine battled with numbers, statistics, and outcomes all based on past circumstances, thereby setting my mind to believe that the past would repeat and reenact itself to always be my future. This again was the insanity that I quote, used to in quote, live in and knew no other life. Yet now, upon awakening in life, the heart, the spirit, and the love all began winning through the fuel of growth. I had to believe in the unseen in order to see the unknown and open the door, the corridor, 
to growth. I witnessed it. I welcomed it. I lived it. I loved it. I was actually lured by it to learn more. Lured as the two selves battled each other in me. The old self was upset because the answer was basic and showed the old self's weakness and cowardice. This is how my new self uncovered years of egoic excuses and reasons to drink. Excuses that were not going to work now for one reason, and that reason was they were called out. These egoic excuses were seen and called out now. As the new self called out my old self, there was only one response from the old self. Silence. There was no answer from the old self because the new self put the old self on the shelf and called it out on its selfish decision-making patterns. The ways of my old self were not for health and wellness. No, these ways were set on the achievement of addiction and escapism, thus leading to death. These ways for escapism in life and avoiding any and all change and challenge in life were how is what ruled my life for years. These were set as routine steps that led to drunkenness and stupidity, of which all were based and fueled off narcissism and greed. Therefore, there was no logical response to come back from my old mind. From this point forward here in jail and here where my old self labeled hell in life, this is where I began to grow. All by taking the shift, making the shift, and welcoming the shift in order to turn this hell into heaven. The shift from the old me in charge for so many years to the new me taking over and growing in life was now taking place. Here is where my holy shift began through awareness. An awareness in life that continued to fuel and lead to growth. This fuel intake valve was my heart. A heart I began fueling with gratitude and acceptance. In doing so, and in being so, I began living so. Living so grateful and living so accepting for where I was at this point. Nothing could hold me back when I received the fuel of growth. I was grateful and accepting for all that I had been through and grown through in life that brought me to this end and new beginning. Grateful and accepting for who I was and what I went through and grew through now in my past life up to this point in this lockdown called jail. I had to be I had to be 100% of each of these emotions. I had to be 100% of each of these emotions in order to overcome my old life and shift from who I was into now who I was destined to become and grow into in life. And by doing so, I became so. Here is where my life I found, here is where in my life I found the proper way to actually use anger and vindictive rage on my old self as a form for positive fuel and change. Here I began to tell the old self, quote, it's time to shut up and grow. There is no room here in my life for addiction any longer. There is no room for escapism. Shut up and grow, old self. Shut up and grow or step aside. End quote. This phrase kept repeating in my mind and began com coming naturally and symbolically for me in order to let the new me grow. This was because now it was common sense. It was a new sense set for me to learn as it wasn't common until now. Yet in my mind and in my life, it grew into the commonality of my everyday life through repetition. It was amazingly easy how to implement and by doing so and knowing so and repeating so, now it made perfect sense to me to see so and be so in order to grow so. The sense of making sense in the exact steps I had to make and take to start sobriety and start a whole new life now made perfect sense, a perfect common normality sense. I began telling myself, that being again the new self telling the old self, Quote, don't drink and you shall live. Don't drink and you shall grow. Don't drink and you shall prosper. End quote. It was all connected to me 
for me and through me in order to accept being perfectly imperfect in life and dealing with life on life's terms. It was the ultimate place of rehab, I could say, that I started my sobriety, that being in the place called jail. Conversations with myself included, quote, what other reason do I need to stop drinking, start over, and begin a whole new life? I'm here in jail. What other reason, Stefan? End quote. I asked my old self, quote, I have lost everything. I'm facing homelessness and now in jail for my fourth DUI in ten and a half years. What other reason do I need? End quote. All the while I had been incruing and living through a 20-year mental, emotional, and physical battle with epilepsy as well. So during this time, I asked myself so many times as well, quote, should I stop drinking? End quote. The answer was obviously yes. All the while I knew this time, the yes had to stick long term. Otherwise, the no would win out and death would be my final answer. I had begun mastering the moment of now and being thankful for all that occurred in my life and for all that brought me here. I began doing so by reflecting so in my life, about my life and what led me here. And by doing, suddenly realizing my awakening moments that had occurred even before the sobriety date. During the past 18 months prior to my arrest in 2012, I had started taking a more natural, holistic, spiritual route to control my epilepsy and control my seizures. Yes, it may sound insane as an alcoholic, but again, half of me was focused on personal and spiritual growth. Half of me was focused on escapism. This all the while as I continued my heavy drinking lifestyle, I was in the insanity of, I was also hitting a point of sanity by focusing on this growth pattern. To me, even with alcohol diluting my vision of life on a daily basis, I could see that this blurred path of unintentional desire to ruin my life, called alcoholism, was actually necessary for my spiritual growth to take place. Yes, necessary. I had to go through hell to get to heaven. I realized this fact as I lived this fact. I was awoke to it now, yet diluted with alcohol during this 18 month period. This was part of the seed being planted that I needed in order to grow. Drinking excessively gave fuel to the spirit of growth to push harder to break through to my true heart and break out of my old habitual lifestyle. This was part of the seed that had been planted back in 2005 from my, quote, accidental awakening, end quote, car accident. This was part of the seed that led to my intentional sobriety part of the seed planted for holistic health and wellness for my brain surgery time period in 2007. All the seeds were planted in the same soil that were slowly watered over the years until the sobriety time. All the seeds were watered and all the seeds were nourished off the accumulating energy building through the preparation of growth growing at this time in my life in 2012. Yet also, this was part of the seed that showed me how meditation could and would change my life in the long run when it came to epilepsy, when it came to personal growth, and when it came to mental and emotional growth. Meditation was key. Even as far back as when I first was introduced to meditation in 2004, and of all places, my first real rehab, a 28-day treatment center for alcohol, this was a huge step and a huge shift that I needed in my life right then and there in order to begin the growth process in 2004. But in the end, it was a growth process I was not ready for at that time. Instead, it took me seven years to implement as it was one shift that I was truly not ready for and therefore would not accept. It was one shift that I knew I needed but also knew I was not ready for to take place at this point in my life. It was very odd to see the spirit battle the ego now. And I knew this all along. These dots of thoughts again connected. The ego versus spirit. Off and on, 2004, 2005, 2007, brain surgery, 2008, ending up in jail over and over again. All these dots made sense now. 
My ego's control outweighed my spirit's intent all along. Then after a seven year period, a quote, seven year shift, end quote, after so many mistakes, after losing everything, after my life ended, I was open, willing, and ready to grow. The ego gave up, the heart looked up, the mind woke up, and the mouth full of excuses shut up, and the spirit began to grow. I then began to see the benefits come to light. This light then shined down on a new path for me of which I had to go down and grow down versus staying on the old path of my past path in life. This was the light in life. This all connected for me in rehab as I was trying to save what was left in my past life. In this process, when I saw the wonderful information through the education on the transformation that the programs such as yoga, meditation, spiritual growth, AA meetings, all had for me personally at this time in 2004 during my rehab, I truly connected and felt the enlightenment during my sobriety time of a new life ready to begin and ready to grow. Yet once again, seven years earlier, I was not ready. Still, the old me would talk its way out of it during this time. It would talk its way through my head into never shifting, never changing, and never growing. Quote, you can handle it. Don't worry, Stefan. You'll get over it. Drinks are easy. You'll be able to handle it. End quote. These were sayings and quotes and brainwashing that was felt by the old self continually. The old me fought to stay in charge and actually won its first battle against enlightenment and awareness during this 2004 time period. The ego which fueled the old me did not want to change and fought hard to resist insight and sight of this new light as it did not want any type of shifting taking place now or in the near future at all. So just as quickly as I connected with the new light for a new life, the old me in its old pre-programmed monkey mind pattern of set ways fueled by insanity continued to maintain control of my mind and disconnect from growth. It talked my way out of it. That is what it did. The mouth full of excuses between the connecting heart of fuel and the mind of action won out again. At this time in 2004, whether the ego liked it or not, a major shift did take place though, and a wonderful seed had been planted. The strength of a collapsed path and the foundation that it had been built and grown upon laid a strong ground to break for the new me. The old me fought to stay alive and won its first battle and would win many more battles like it over the next few years. Yet during this first face-off within my body, mind, and spirit, the seeds of meditation, the seeds of awareness, and the seed of the ultimate formation of prayer were now firmly planted. And from here, I began connecting the dots of thoughts and spiritual growth and began transforming and growing every day, slowly but surely, into my new life. Initially, I was not a fan of this awakening and was not a fan of the new steps introduced to me, this being the old me that it was introduced to. The old me could not understand it and would not accept it, quote, it. The it being meditation, the it being yoga, the it being peace of mind, the it being tranquility, the it being growth, and the it of all matters being change. Since I never experienced long-term sobriety and never experienced spiritual growth nor enlightenment in life, I could not remain calm, I could not remain quiet, and I would not accept change. All this because my monkey mind, aka the ego, was still in the driver's seat of life, still filling me with excuses of why not to change, blame of who to look at for why my life sucked, and more and more reasons of why I ended up here that were not focused simply by looking in the mirror. Meditation was a complete joke to me at this time. Yet along my journey, after this abundant soulful awakening, there arose the fuel of change in my life with major obstacles occurring on a routine basis. Two DUIs, divorce, bankruptcy, loss of all major investments and material items, followed by homelessness shortly thereafter, all within a three-year window, 
All of this woke me up to a must change or must die part of my life. I then began to water the seed in the soil of my mind that woke me, awoke me to meditation. I then began to wake up and breathe. As I took in the wholeness of a new breath for a new life, I watered my soul with gratitude and watered my mind with life from the new passion of living with heart. Slow breathing techniques is what I learned and was taught by my new self in jail at this time. A formation of meditation became one with my daily implementation of gratitude for life. Again, a formation of meditation became one with my daily implementation of gratitude for life. Placement of the soul in this daily life through living and awareness took effect. The new me took place through formation in the heart to feel life and transformation in the mind to act and to be in life. This path was fueled in growth through every breath in this new life for this new me. I would breathe an easy breath of awareness and be thankful for it. This newness for me was the first form of meditation for me, even without knowing what meditation was. I experienced it by simply slowing down and being aware of breath. This was a brief yet exquisite form of growth for me. I could feel it, even the tingling in my mind, in my head, the tingling down my arms, which used to be connected with epilepsy, this I experienced through meditation. Over the next seven years, from this 2004 to 2011 period up until my point in jail in 2012, this seed of meditation began growing, forming, and evolving as part of my new life, especially during the times of sobriety, off and on, briefly. I felt it, I lived it, I loved it. The water of growth came from authors and speakers such as Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, John Asaraf, the book The Secret, and many others that I intended events on, saw, read, listened to, and attracted in my life in order to form a new abundant life of purpose, of prosperous growth. The meditation worked. The peacefulness worked. The benefits of silence were acknowledged by the new mind connected with spirit, and they too worked. The patterns and steps I was taking to meditate and wean my way off of epilepsy medication worked. This for the fact that brain surgery did not work in 2007. I had to find what could and would work by first feeling the healing. This began through meditation where I then began to have inner growth and see, feel, and live the difference. Even during my time of drinking from 2011 to 2012, meditation was implemented and I felt and lived the difference. Medication that I was on for over 15 years began having such horrific side effects on my body and mental emotional state of well-being that I had to find an alternate route. A route focused on healing versus numbing. I no longer wanted to numb the pain and temporarily freeze the seizures with medication. Medications that were also prescribed by doctors for schizophrenia were no longer compatible for me. Kidneys, liver, and many other human and many other related human body parts in my body were being affected. I continually had to get tested every six months for these to make sure that the medication and its side effect were not hurting my kidneys and liver. Of course, the combination of alcohol would be added, and this was simply an insanity lifestyle. I wanted to give in, and I wanted to heal. I found healing through feeling. I found feeling connected with deep thought and awareness helped me to release pain, release stress, release anxiety, and release me, my new self, into a whole new life. These alternative routes were holistic, over-the-counter herbal medications. These included CBD, hemp, even marijuana, and any and all natural forms of herbs and holistic healing that I needed to experiment with from 2010 to 2012 with in order to change what was not working. That quote, not, end quote, being the pharmaceutical drugs and the nearly two decades of numerous prescriptions. These were not working and I tried anything and everything. 
And of course, again, the alcohol was still involved, but still in all my work along with all in this alternative path, the grand mal seizures were stopped in 2011, even before ending my drinking. They were stopped by meditation. They were stopped by a change of mindset. They were stopped by a change of beliefs. They were stopped in all areas of my life by focusing on what I ate and what I drank. Again, I fell off and drank alcohol, yet I shifted. Half of my life was a spiritual growth. Half of it was a path to hell through alcohol. Beliefs that entailed a can-do mindset and feeling an unstoppable need to be in control of my seizures is what shifted me. I told myself I was done with epilepsy and that I was done, done being done when it came to fighting an illness that medication and my current lifestyle could not stop. This off and on holistic path combined with leading a continual alcoholic lifestyle went on for nearly a two year period before my ultimate jail time, October 10th, 2012. From this main shift and main change, I started to maintain and consistently, consistently do meditation. This worked. It slowed down my mind, helped me relax, helped my mind be in control by being connected with my heart of my life overall. I was in control of my mind, unable to mind my thoughts, mind my feelings, and mind my life. At the time before my accidental awakening and jail time, the phrase meditation over medication entered my life. Then when this message of awakening hit me in life, this mess of positive change entered my life. I simply in implemented that quote in my mind over and over in order to rule my life's path and shift my outcome during my jail time. Meditation over medication. I use this time as a wake time and by being spiritually awoken with a shut up and act mindset, I didn't bother to tell the sheriffs and their medical staff that I was on medication. Yes, crazily enough, I had been battling epilepsy in my recent years after brain surgery did not work in 2007, but I skipped all these medically required steps here in jail and didn't bother to say a word about who I was in life before entering jail. I simply shut up, stopped making excuses, and began to grow. This was my life, and this was insanity to most people, but to me, the insanity of breaking the insane lifestyle I lived through alcohol is what pulled me and grew me into a sane lifestyle of meditation, personal growth, and self-development. Of course, I was not a doctor, and of course, I would never prescribe this medical insanity to anyone else but myself. Yet at this time, I felt, I believed, and I lived in the mindset that I had no other option. This new ultimate self knew I could and would find a new path that worked for myself, through myself, with my new self in charge now. Quote, begin being. End quote. And this new being began being the one that did not bother to tell the sheriffs either that I was prescribed to stay on daily medication for my seizures and epilepsy because I wanted something different. I wanted off the medication and connected the dots of thoughts by understanding that being off alcohol now meant being off medication. This is how I forced myself into sobriety and forced myself into being medication free, epilepsy free, and belief in failure free. I was belief in failure, free now. No more alcohol, no more marijuana, no more, no more prescription drugs, no more of anything that I used to need and was required to fuel my old self with daily. I no longer let my past haunt me by, haunt me any further. I no longer let my past haunt me any further. I was growing strong and ready to face it now. Face it through sobriety. The strength with my confidence was now my fuel for my prescription of gratitude and thankfulness. Being thankful 1,000 times every day, in every way, through 1,000 milligrams of gratitude? This was my shift. This was my prescription. As I began to see it, call it, and live it, the old me was done. This was the new me, and I loved it. When this DUI hit me and jail time started, 
I didn't care anymore. I simply knew that I wanted and needed a dramatic change. I wanted the death of the old me and the birth of the new me all at once. And this was part of the process for what I did to my body to make this change. The doctor's prescriptions were not working, but they wanted me to remain on them for my entire life. According to their prescribed steps, my entire life would remain an entire prescription. But instead, I was done. Done with medication. Done with seizures. Done with epilepsy. Done with addiction. And done with all my escapism. Yes, I was done being done. Of course, I knew it was easier said than done. But where I had ended up in this huge hole I dug myself over and over again in my life, now, there were no other options. I began awakening with, my, with more conscious clarity each and every morning in jail. I was sick of the insanity and sick of everything that wasn't working. I was sick of it. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was sick of my past lifestyle that led me here. I was sick of taking medication. I was sick of addiction. I was sick of epilepsy and seizures. I was sick of escapism. I was sick of anything and everything that I was past tense in life that wasn't working for me in my new life and that was holding me back yet I had been holding on to it for years I was sick of it the I am sick and tired of being sick and tired became an epiphany for what I saw later as the cornerstone shift in my life that being the spiritual awakening to a new life for me I was done with my old and ready to bring in my new Medication for me was one step that was no longer working, one step that had not been working for years, and one prescription I was tired of being prescribed. For the past two years of my nearly 20-year battle with epilepsy, I felt I was literally being prescribed to die, as they began to call it. Quote, prescribing to die, end quote, for me was that of choosing prescription drugs in order to lessen the effect of epilepsy so I could simply continue living my old daily lifestyle of escapism. Maintaining it versus changing it. That's how I lived and that's how I nearly died. I didn't get rid of alcohol during this time. I did not change my diet. I didn't do anything. I simply took the doctor's prescriptions, listened to the, his or her suggestions, agreed with what they said, yet never changed. My lifestyle remained the same. Therefore, my outcome lacked any potential for gain. I chose prescriptions in order to limit the seizures and lessen the epilepsy, all the while never making an attempt to change my life. I never made the attempt to eat better, never focused on how important it was for me to sleep better, never tried to drink less, and overall, always had the thought, but never had the strength to take action. I never had the strength to change and definitely never had the strength to maintain a more healthy lifestyle overall. I had to make the change. I had to implement the change. I had to be the change. I had to grow. Instead, none of these steps were, were even attempted. I simply listened to doctors tell me why to take their prescribed drugs and how I had to change into, grow into, and maintain a healthier lifestyle. Still, I did nothing about it long term. It seemed every time I tried to combine fitness with a party lifestyle, I had seizures. So I simply dropped the fitness and maintained the chaotic lifestyle of drinking, gambling, and partying without telling my doctors. This was easier. They told me to take their prescribed drugs and lead a healthy lifestyle, but I could not do both with alcohol fueling and running my life. Although this latter transition was way too difficult to live through at this time, it was continually difficult as the new me versus the old me was in a losing battle to come to life. A battle I partook in to stay afloat as I swam in this lifeboat of addiction, especially from the year prior to my jail time. The lifeboat was captained by I, myself, as an alcoholic of which was flooded and sinking in from alcohol. It was something I swam in daily. I swam in the daily area of survival on the tidal waves of chaos I created through the continual rip currents of tide I lived in, all induced by alcohol. Here, 
I was, I easily remained addicted to alcohol and addicted to escapism. And here I knew if I continued down this drinking path and horrifically unhealthy lifestyle, I would soon be dead. Yet even as death began knocking at my door louder and louder each week before my sobriety, the confined space I had created known as a solitude lifestyle of addiction never lessened and only grew worse. I was living in my own lockdown for nearly a decade. What I lived through later in life with COVID-19, most recently in our lockdown in this world, was nothing compared to the solitude confinement of my own personal jail I lived in at this time for daily, for weeks, months, and years. It was my lockdown from life. This old self could not stop forming into death. Yet the new self never gave up. The new self kept getting back up, kept knocking at the door, and kept forming into the new me. A new me I knew I had to be in order to survive and grow. My time had come to write myself a whole new prescription. A prescription that prescribed the new me a whole new life of living life to the fullest every day. I now had the will, the inner strength, and the wherewithal to write, prescribe, and implement to my new self that prescription of change. That prescription of gratitude and that prescription of 1,000 milligrams of thankfulness to be used daily. I now had it and now did it. I changed myself for myself through my new self in order for my old self to die and my new self and new life to truly be born and begin to live. I did so by prescribing myself a positive mindset, positive outlook, and the ultimate prescription of change in my life. I finally did so and became so by doing so through transforming so. I became that new spiritual being and human being that was transforming. The transformation was taking place. Right then and there, I became my own doctor and began to prescribe myself health, prescribe myself wellness, and through prescribing myself with personal, with personal growth, I developed into this new being. For me, at this point in jail, this was the perfect time to detox. Detox off alcohol, detox off gambling, detox off bars, and overall detox away from and eventually off addiction and escapism. And thereby as well, there was no more ideal time than the present for me to welcome solitude through the implementation of daily routine, a daily routine of meditation, of which involved thoughtfulness, mindfulness, present awareness, and overall forgiveness of my past self in order for my new self to grow. Quote, Seeds planted in the present will grow roots for your future, all the while being accompanied by weeds from your past. Welcome both as you seed the roots of growth with gratitude, garden the weeds out of your past through the fuel of forgiveness, and fertilize your soil daily with the water of abundance. End quote. Here I learned a quote I began to live by daily. Quote, be present in the now and own the moment of now and you will have won the moment of life. Now own one. That is N-O-W. End quote. I then saw, felt, and lived myself shifting and my life shifting into a whole new dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind and of heart and of that which includes soul. The soul that is fueled by a soulful awakening that took place in me, through me, and for me in order to grow. This is what I saw, this is what I felt, and this is what I lived through and grew through in my holy shift time here in jail. I broke out of my old prison of addiction. I broke out of the past by unlocking the key to awareness and opening the soulful heart to build a whole new path to form a whole new life. Through awareness, I found that I had to be very thankful for what I had been through, gone through, survived through, and grown through in my now past life. I found that it was now time to inform, conform, and reform myself into my whole new mindset. A mindset connected with the heart set of transformation, transforming from one life to the next by fueling the heart with forgiveness and understanding. 
This transformation started with the power of forgiveness for my past life. That being fueling my, my, myself daily, yes, even in jail, with gratitude and forgiveness in myself for myself in order to have my new self grow. I found that who I was in life, who I had become in life, and who I was set to grow into in life now were all three separate entities. Yet these entities had to connect and grow as one. Thus, in order to connect and grow, I had to forgive others in my past where applicable, and most off through my new self, had to forgive me, that being my past self. It was time for forgiveness, and in doing so, it was time for growth. In order to grow on the outside, I had to forgive myself on the inside. Therefore, by learning from the past and growing, quote, within, end quote, within through my new self, I would begin changing the view of my old self from blame and shame of my past actions and outcomes to gratitude and forgiveness for earning and learning toward future growth. This step would entail using this inner transformation to change my view on the outside and begin growing without. That being without anger, without resentment, without guilt, without blame, and working on the inside daily to grow from this step on the outside. I had to create the future in my mind first and then live it in my actions second. All by using the passion of my heart as fuel. I saw I could do this. I knew I could do it and I began doing it. By setting goals and knowing exactly what I was living for, what I was living for and living for presently and working to live towards in the future each day and each moment of my chosen actions, the future was mine, in my mind, in order to hold and control ahead of me. I saw the past, I lived in the present with gratitude, and I welcomed the future with abundance. These steps, heart set, and mindset all connected in my first two weeks of jail as I saw, felt, and lived in the moment of now. I live so by knowing so. I live so by knowing so well the fact that I must take action to fully implement change and never look back. I did so by simply being thankful for the shared bunk bed cell I had when I started out with a wonderful veteran of the, of the streets. This veteran again, Surfer Brad, taught me so much about the jail system and how to act, how to be, and how to do everything in the right way every day. He was a great connection for me to have in order to learn the ins and outs of daily life in jail by respecting others and staying on a path of privacy and solitude one day at a time. Here I began to grow into a new life through a sober, clear mindset. Surfer Brad even asked me, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. He joked about this, but literally he woke me up by asking this so many times. You shouldn't be here. This isn't for you. His laughter added to the fun part of this, but his questions woke me to this new life. I now saw and learned that the unplanned and unexpected should always be welcomed in life. There is change and there is opportunity for growth for everything that happens in life. This is where I learned this through sobriety and through awakening and through acceptance. For all the good and all the bad, for all the planned and all the unplanned, for all the expected and unexpected, and especially for all the, quote, accidents, end quote, that happen in our life and that happen in my life, events like these can, will, and are destined to show growth in life itself. Mindset of acceptance is key. This is what I learned. For all that we don't want to happen at the time of its occurrence, we can and will find the positive through the right mindset of acceptance of that which I did right here in jail. Even with what our mind has in mind for us, when it comes to the ego's view of our achievements in school, in work, in finances, and in life, all that it has planned in our mind many times collapses or changes dramatically at one point in life or another. Nothing is ever perfect. Here in jail, I learned to turn the imperfect to I'm perfect. I'm perfectly imperfect, is what I told myself. That's what happened in my life. 
when life itself throws us a curveball and adds changes to our initial plan as we encounter a major fork in the road, I found out I, we, should welcome those challenging changes and not resist them. Of that which I did and of that which I became thankful. I became thankful through forgiveness at this time. I learned in the here and the now that challenge and change are a part of life. If we think they are not and should never be there, we should never face challenges and changes. I found by this time in life, they will always continue to arise. What you resist persists. All through the previously mentioned spiritual fact of this point. What you resist persists. And when they do, as was never, I was never ready. And when they do repeat itself, I was never ready in the past. I was never welcoming, and I was never strong enough to make it through and grow through these moments in life without alcohol and without escapism. Quote, the word change is even in the word challenge. End quote. Resistance to change and resistance to being able to work through a hard path was all fuel for anger, depression, and pain in my life. All this for one reason. There is always change and there is always going to be challenges. Yet at this time, in my drinking, I could not accept that. They are a part of life though that we must learn to use as fuel in order to grow. The battle between the ego, that which is the one that wants what is expected by society in its own mind, versus the spirit, the one that expects and accepts the unexpected through the heart, they are both in a constant battle in our life, through our life, for our life. The ego wants to rule, the spirit wants to fuel. Fuel your life with happiness, that is what I learned. Stick with the spirit, live in spirit. I focused on this. As the ego battles hard, the spirit simply accepts. I had to learn to choose the latter, that being the spirit. As your leader through awareness of your gut instinct, I began to see this spirit talking to me through the gut instinct. Feel your decisions before making them is what I told myself. This connected the dots of thoughts to understanding that gut instinct and how it worked. Think of and process the outcome before acting. Know that you are the leader and decision maker of your own life, Stefan. I had to start telling myself this. The spirit told me. It influenced me. It led me. It showed me. Quote, no one else is to blame. Whether positive or negative in your outcome, you are your own decision maker. Fear and anger are in the mind. Growth and passion are in the heart. Therefore, lead with heart, live with heart, grow with heart. Choose with spirit and you will grow with passion and the results of love will follow." End quote. I journaled thoughts down like this. I journaled ideas that came to my mind through the spirit. The following quote, live in spirit, love in spirit, live in life, love in life, repeat, end quote. These came to me daily and I repeated these daily. I lived in them daily. Even when our planned outcomes in life don't work, nor when our outcomes in life were never planned, always be thankful. I had to start telling myself by living this every day, living with heart. I took notes and journaled on this newfound fact in my life. I read it. I lived it. I loved it. Here I began to better understand how to handle the unknown, and I better understood how to accept all outcomes along the way. In doing so, these outcomes became a whole new spiritual income, an income of spiritual growth that I could use for investing with confidence in my whole new life. For me, this time in the tank gave me a whole new outlook on life. This was a time of patience, a time of change, and even a time of welcome depression for me. Yes, I had to welcome depression through living in true awareness and knowing now that the acceptance of closure of my past life 
will more quickly bring forth the opening of my new life. I now saw depression as a defined step of growth. Depression was the end of one life and the beginning of another. By living in acceptance and having the new inner strength to accept this as a fact of depression, I was able to process the loss of my old life as the gain of my new life. The old me died, revealing and releasing deep pressing ions. I had to break that word down. I became analytical on words and saw depression, depression as deep pressing ions throughout my entire body, all both mentally, emotionally, and physically. The word depression for me was not a bad term nor a bad feeling. Instead, I saw it now as a much welcomed growth process. In the past, this feeling and process nearly killed me dozens of times. It was my old life ending. It was the old me giving up, the old me pushing to end my life. It nearly killed me dozens of times. Now through awareness and my spiritual awakening, I knew that the past me was dead and the new me was ready to grow. It was a much needed and well-deserved release of relief for my new self. One life ended not through death, but instead had ended through connectivity with the new spirit in me, a spirit able to close one door and open another, the other being the door unlocked through spiritual growth for a whole new life. This transition time in jail was literally a very deep, heartfelt experience, one where I experienced the feeling and formation of suicide. This is how I felt when I came to having the old me die and the new me being born. Yet the birth of the latter was not there yet, and all I felt was the death of the former. It was horrible. I now understood why people choose death over life while on a similar path such as mine. I could feel the answer to how suicide was the preferred choice of exiting life for many who came to this point in their life, especially in jail and headed to prison. This was the prison within my mind that nearly took my life. They, I, we, all of us that have been through that could think of no other option but giving in to death and giving up on life. This time in the tank for me was filled with time to think and time to be thankful for more than I ever knew I had in life. That is how I overcame suicide, that of which being a new love for life. I knew there was more out there. I became thankful for more, more than ever before that I had in my life. I became thankful more now than ever for what I had been through and gone through in my past. That which was simply being alive now. I was thankful for it. I grew acceptance of my past by being thankful for my heart, being grateful for my will, and being loving for my passion to continue to live this whole new life. I saw that life for myself, and the outcome to follow was my individual responsibility based on my ability to respond. It was solely based on the thoughts I chose to process into decisions. Those decisions would turn into actions, and those actions would become my life. There was no one else to blame in my life if I wasn't happy for my life other than myself. I could see how blame on others is what brought me down each and every time over the years. I now had to eliminate blame and implement gain, and by doing so, I would have two main choices. The choice to make excuses, point the finger, blame others, and eventually die in self-hatred and self-regret. Or option two, begin to choose acceptance over blame, love over hate, and life over death. I had to shift from living off the fuel of excuses and blame to growing off the fuel of positive belief. I did so by knowing the fact that I had to excuse the excuses out of my life. The less I blamed, the better I felt. Because blaming others never resolved anything. They couldn't change who they were and the actions taken by them were not going to change. But what I could change was the actions I took and the thoughts I had and the beliefs I had. By focusing on myself as the one to blame, I began to grow. I began to grow by accepting full responsibility for all the choices I made in life and the results that followed that put me here. 
I saw that in the end, whether positive or negative, acceptance of our daily outcomes from our own decisions making from our own decision making was the key. I began to analyze myself more and ask myself, quote, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this and how can I grow? End quote. This became a huge step in personal awareness, self-development, and growth. This is what I learned in the School of Hard Knocks. This is what I learned here in jail. I grew personally by now understanding that the outcomes of our destiny are based on our beliefs, of which fuel our actions. When living off a belief of blaming others for our outcome, our destiny of failure shall never change. Beliefs of what will happen to us become our daily life. Before this time, destiny was harsh. Destiny was a harsh wood word for me to believe. Before this time, destiny was a harsh word for me to believe. That being for the fact that my life was a mess and if I had to believe in destiny, I had to blame myself. I couldn't do it until now. I then began shifting my outlook on life from the past to the future. I shifted from focusing on current results based on past decision making to future outcomes based on current acceptance and change in belief. Here in jail, my life began to shift. My life began to grow. I now had the ability to move forward and focus on growth in the present for growth in the future versus blame on the past and hatred for the present of which would kill my future. Even in jail, I saw through the drugs, saw through the gangs, saw through the daily patterns of racism. I saw through all the self-hatred that lingered daily in nearly every jail inmate on my block. I saw through it all. I saw that the one self they hated the most was their own self, just as I did up to this point. The self that truly put us all here in jail, and it was a self they could not face. It was a self that for many, even me up to this point, could not consciously confront nor even be aware of in life. Accepting our faults and blaming our own self was the key I found for growth. Many, if not all, in this prison of lockdown from life could not do it. It was always someone else's fault for us being locked up, locked down, locked in, and locked out of life. Yet nearly all would ever admit this fact. The same went for me until this connection of chemistry with my heart linking to my mind took place here in jail. The same went for me until my new observance with an open mind seeded into growth for my new life began. I now saw through the cover of blame. I saw through the hatred, I saw through the jealousy, and I saw through excuses. I saw through it to the point now of knowing that each one of these inmates were battling their own past demons as I was myself. All of which I now saw was part of the connection for us being here. We had to learn and we had to grow. By doing so, we had to blame less on others and look within. It wasn't all based on what we were going through right then and there in jail. Instead, it was based on how we could not accept being there in jail. It was a clear light in life how we used to blame on how we were used to blaming others as the main reason for us being where we were in life right then and there. This was the insanity that would never stop in their life, but had to stop in mine. By awakening my heart to connect with my mind, I began to see this path of shift and growth more clearly. I then began to be able to accept my point of being and be thankful for it. I then saw clearly how I had to be able to see and accept where I was in jail and in life. This had to actually became a must as it pertained to no U-turns allowed now in my life. Less blame was relevant to more gain in the areas of future growth for me. I knew this fact as I lived this fact and it became this fact as a matter of fact through the six week growth process here in jail. See, act, live, become, grow, repeat. I lived in these steps through my weeks in jail, first by means of survival. 
I would see the other's lack of patience and lack of ability to communicate through other means besides physical confrontation and see their results of longer jail times. The more fights they got in, the more time they did. I would see their lifestyle of insanity of living in a cycle they could not break now and would realistically never break until the end of their life. This is because they could see no other way of living life except by ending life. A cycle of repeating the insanity that led them to jail, homelessness, and chaos would keep revolving in them and around them until their dying day. That was simply accepted by them as they knew no other life. Yet I simply came in there with the intent to change and intent to grow and thought everyone would be doing the same in order to not repeat this insanity. They would want to be in the same way and make it out alive and live to grow another day. This is what I thought. Yet this was not true. Many upon many fellow sentenced jail inmates were there to die. Yet on my end, I had a newborn awareness that sparked in my heart. Through this awareness, I saw their egoic fighting reactions and saw the end of their life coming up. That being the end of their life from the results of the end of any hope, the end of any change, and the end of any growth, and the upcoming end of their life. All this based on their inability not to end their old life and begin a new life. Through this experience and newfound awareness, I gathered newfound strength and was able to humble myself. I chose to use this as a, quote, life 101, end quote, class, based on acceptance, learning, and growth experience in life, that being so I could and would live another day. I did so by using it as fuel for the beginning of my new life. So for me to see and learn from their inabilities, to handle their own life and decisions, this gave me the ability to transform into a whole new being. In the end, on my end, as I entered the end of my old life, I then saw how this was all an experience of growth that I was to use as fuel for a whole new life. I accepted my present state and situation with love and projected growth through positive, through positivity and thankfulness. I accepted my present state and situation with love and projected growth through positivity and thankfulness. From this, I learned how to subdue the ego and grow in heart. I saw how the quote, old you, end quote, can and will react in each and every one of us based on emotions. I saw how my former pre-programmed mindset controlled by the ego was set to react with conflict and blame. The ego that always wants to be right and the ego that fights never to be wrong. This was the one that was in control of my life, yet this was the one that lost control of my life. I now saw how the new you that was born within me began to ponder and observe with patience before reacting. This was my, quote, new you, end quote, led by spirit and fueled by the passion of a new life of which started in my heart. Here I saw and learned that the ego in me and in all of us is full of resistance to change. Here is where I saw, here's where I also saw how our spirit is full of soulful acceptance for growth. I learned now that which one rules our life is up to us individually. The one which rules our life is up to us individually. Either continuing to live a life ruled by the old individual us that does not want to change or beginning a new life. A new life led by the new individual quote being. That being the being of the new us that does not want to change. As we become more awoken to life and awoken to living life with heart day in and day out, the more soulful acceptance to change to this latter being connects and grows to become the norm. It was the new me to change and grow now. And I, the new me, accepted the challenge. I saw how this entailed working on myself in the area of awareness for suspending one more day locked in a closet a closet of rules set by society standards of which I was lost in for multiple decades. It was a closet full of fear. I lived in it for years. I had to make my own new rules based on my heart, 
based on my passions and based truly on my gut instincts, focused on personal growth and self-development. This is what inspired me and motivated me daily to wake up in jail and welcome the new day. Yes, every morning at 4 a.m., when we were routinely woken for our morning breakfast call, I began to say, thank you. Thank you, God, for this wonderful day in jail. Even with an exclamation mark there. That is how I was in my own self, this new self. The awkwardness and clumsy rhetoric that I used when initially programming my mind to follow this pattern quickly became a routine though. I awoke to awaken to this new life and work continually to no longer let the past rule me. <clears throat> I started to wake up daily with positivity and acceptance. These two characteristics fueled the new me to grow. It was a decision I had to make before the feeling was made. This positivity and happiness did not just click into effect overnight, nor did I feel it instantly. The routine of doing before being eventually brought these new true feelings to life. My choice to become what I wanted to be was taken through steps of being the me I wanted to be in my heart and then programming my mind to act in this manner in order to become a new being in life. I had to end what wasn't working and become something new that could and would be working. Yes, even if it didn't work right away. If I failed, I had to keep trying. I had to persist, accept my faults, fuel myself with positivity from failure, and not give up on growth. And in the end, it worked. I turned off the old me and turned on the new me and stopped waiting for someone to walk by in my life and flip that switch for change. That was not going to happen. I realized this fact. I lived this fact. And I finally turned this new light and life on right here in jail. I did so by observing with courage the whole process taking place in my life. My old self and my old entity dying and the new self being born. This courage then built up strength. I then saw and fought to use the strength I had within me to literally choose my feelings rather than having my feelings choose me. I had been letting feelings run my life for years. I had been basing my life on what I felt I should be doing in order to meet the standards set by others. I lived according to what I felt others wanted to see me doing and see me being. With this focus, and lack of forethought in life, I had no life. I was lost at this point, not yet to be found, until these very days in jail. Here I woke by beginning to master tomorrow's outcome today by developing a more powerful mindset on what I could be, not what I thought I should be or should have been according to others. With these quote should haves, end quote, I always brought myself down. This should be mentality led to a lost path of discomfort from continually making mistakes that took me one step forward but set me two steps back. For me to now be able to be able to decipher the difference and listen to my gut instinct was a wonderful turning point and growing point in life. The difference being that I now saw the spiritual awakening and opening connection of my conscious mind to my soulful heart. This began the change and growth I needed by shutting up the mouthful of excuses in between these two areas. The conscious mind connected with the soulful heart and personal growth developed day in and day out. I now began to have and use emotional control over the same circumstances that used to cause fuel for anger, resentment, and giving up on life. Through this control, I began to fuel the new me to be born again in life and began living a whole new life. I use this fuel to see through mistakes, through, see through wrongdoings, see through hardship, and begin to see the light and life in every situation. This new beginning also helped me to see through what I felt was wrong or, quote, not right, end quote, at the time of its occurrence in my past. I began to thank God with gratitude for what was wrong in my life. And by doing so, the wrong soon became right. Yes, it became right for the fact that it was a right now learning lesson. 
With an open mind and an open heart, I saw that right now, I could now accept the wrongdoings of my past by being grateful for them and the learning experience they gave me in life. I saw, felt, and lived how the sooner I accepted them as the seed for growth, the sooner it alleviated pain, negativity, and guilt. It was actually the seed for growth. The seed for growth was found through the seed of forgiveness. I watered both of them daily. This process began to implement that of all knowingness in me of the fact that, quote, what was wrong could now be right, end quote. This meant that I had to hold myself accountable for wrong actions and wrong mistakes from my past. I had to use them as fuel to change, fuel to learn, fuel to grow, fuel to love, and most off, fuel to live, fuel to live daily in love all of which began through the view and ideology of how my mind worked and how it had to know and how it all of which began through the view and ideology of how my mind worked and how it had to now be fueled with positivity this new fuel factor in my life began to fuel my life with the new all-knowingness that with faith and trust in this higher power above me all that occurred in life even what I did not want or plan to occur at that time was part of my destiny and part of my fuel for growth. Through this view and understanding, I could see how all this positivity and negativity could and would come together as one to grow into abundance of happiness and form a whole new life. From being in awareness, I began understanding the fact that emotions derived within us from what we see happening around us or to us are not always correct emotions to be using. They are pre-programmed emotions from our past based on past experiences and the outcomes that followed those experiences. These learning experience, this learning experience taught me to hold off on emotions taking charge of my reactions. Instead, I learned to be in control before losing control of my outcome. This meaning of being comes from the fact that what does occur in the present as a negative can and will grow into a positive in the future. I had to understand this fact and begin living this fact daily. I had to understand the fact that I was in control of my emotions and my outcome in the future. Acceptance of present negativity through understanding that future abundance can and will grow was my key to unlocking soulful awareness and peace within myself. This process was brought forth through the steps of mindset, acceptance, forgiveness, understanding, and hard work to feel, to fuel my life with positivity. No matter how hard the road was in life, I had to focus on going through it and growing through it. This was part of my divine destiny a part where I discovered how the formation of the fuel of forgiveness works, how to forgive my past, nourish the present, and thereby begin growing into the future. I then developed a mindset in the new mind of mine for mastering tomorrow's outcome today. Everything clicked. I began being thankful for the moment of now. It was a click for growth moment that I'll never forget. For this 1,000 hour period I spent in jail during my six weeks of lockup, I saw a path being built before me as one of being consistent and persistent with the fact that we must awaken in life at one time or another. We must awaken to life or we will miss life just like that in the blink of an eye. We must awaken within in order to know more about what our true life and our true destiny have in store for us. I prayed and I prayed hard during this jail time. This was the hardest time in my life. To see my life in like this was horrifically painful. And it wasn't for the fact, and if it wasn't for the fact that I began to see that when one life ends, another begins, I would have never made it out alive. This was my first step, that of acknowledging the fact that there are two beings, two entities within me and within all of us. The 10% of our being, which consists of the conscious or the ego, and the 90% of this being, which consists of the subconscious or that of the soulful spirit. 
Until now, I never realized this fact. But by being in the now, I now saw that if we don't, if we do not have this awakening, this realization, and this epiphany in life, for life, through life, our whole life will be null and void. Our life will be void from spiritual growth as it will continue to be run by the ego and be pre-programmed daily by society instead of being able to live with passion and live with heart. I no longer wanted to live this way. My awakening occurred and by looking forward, I knew I would never be looking back and I would never change into the way I was again. My awakening occurred by being awoken to the fact that I was so tired of being asleep spiritually through my entire life. I was asleep by living in the 10% conscious mind state for years that never let my spirit awaken and take charge. I found myself wandering down a path in life created by the wondering what my true calling and destiny really was in life. This being wondering versus wandering. I was always wondering where I was going in life. I felt as if I was wandering through life, lost in life by never knowing the true meaning of life, doing what society taught me, told me, and showed me to do, but never being truly happy with what I was doing. I never knew my true passion and my true heartfelt reason for being here in life. When I achieved all the financial success necessary for what I had been programmed by society to achieve in order to bring happiness, true heartfelt happiness never followed. At this time period, I then began to wander in life, never having a map or even a set path for where I wanted to be in life. I was then wandering lost, never to be found. The programming I lived through had no intention of happiness beyond money. And when I achieved all the money and all the financial success, I had been programmed to achieve for happiness. True happiness never awoken me. This is where I saw that the wanderer in me was my lost self that had created a lost life. I began to wander through life, going in and out of life on a daily basis through the escapism route of alcohol. Job by job, relationship to relationship, all ended in a mess. Never knowing it was all connected to the lost trail I was on for so long, led by alcohol. That being the trail of living by society's view versus living through my heartfelt view. I had to live with passion. I had to live with heart in order to get out of this. Escapism had become my norm. I was a lost driver on a lost path I had created in life. A path I drove recklessly down through the hills of life at a crazy pace in a complete stupor vision. Now blurred by society's view of financial success, supposedly bringing the ultimate happiness, I continually swerved on this road to avoid reality. It was an all new reality I no longer wanted to be in. I wanted out, out of life. Jail's toughest times for me came when my spirit awoke and I began to ask myself, my old self, quote, who am I? Why am I here? And what's this life for anyways? End quote. This was the subconscious spirit raising its hand in life to be heard and simply be acknowledged by the conscious ego. The one who was the ruler of my past, the conscious ego. The one who was always in control of my outcome. The one who was in charge of my failure and had put me in jail for the fourth time in a decade of life. This was the ruler that avoided acknowledgement of the hand raising from this subconscious spirit through my entire life. It was a conscious entity that ruled my world with orders consisting of, quote, get this job, get this house, get this car, get this boat, get this lady, get more money, then you'll be happy, end quote. Answers in jail to these who, why, and what questions were not available here in spirit just yet. But with spirit, I began breathing. With spirit, I began living with patience. With spirit, I began living with understanding and understanding that I did not need these answers now. Now I had patience. Now I could wait in peace for these answers to come later. 
I began living with acceptance, an acceptance to the all-knowingness of forgiveness. Forgiveness fueled consciousness. Forgiveness gave way to enlightenment. Forgiveness became the cure for the pain caused from my past. Forgiveness was fuel for my new spirit and growth in life. Forgiveness began to win out over the ego's past tactics of envy, greed, revenge, and anger. These no longer worked. Yes, they were still there. Yes, they came up. But the power of forgiveness was now within me. Forgiving myself through myself for myself by forgiving others when and where necessary and forgiving all that was and all that is in my life. I was able to grow. At this point now, I was turning the F yous to thank yous in life. From F this, F that, F you, F everyone is how I used to live a lifestyle led through a narrow-minded view of blame, blame, and blame. Continue blaming others. Yet now it was the gain time. Again, I became able to gain in life. Time for me to regain my life and start over on a whole new path in order to gain a whole new life. Through this fuel of forgiveness, I began to see the light of a new future. A future not based on what I made financially, nor what I made materialistically, or where I was in life with status in society. No, the future I saw through the newfound awakened spirit was based on what I was truly passionate about in life, for life, with life, the passion of my personal growth, taking my life to the next level, and helping others grow and make that similar shift in their own life. Quote, what is my true passion? End quote. This question became abundantly important in my life during this time in jail and during this burning and turning time of my old life to my new life. It was a passion I sought to find. It was a new thought pattern I fought to understand. It was a battle to generate a new life. It was a battle I was ready to fight through the whole it was a battle I was ready to fight through the fuel of connectivity with my heart, my true heart, my new heart. There was no hole in my heart any longer. It connected and I was ready to grow. I knew intuitively it was a battle that would never end. It was a battle for life, with life, through life. But the passion I now felt to live this life was amazing. Yes, again, even in jail, life was amazing to be living now. Quote, of that which I'm thankful. End quote. I kept repeating this phrase here daily, even hourly, as this passion to live sparked a new understanding for being in life. A part of being truly alive in life, through life, with life, was found by discovering the new true being who was now at the helm of my ship and guiding me on a path of destiny. I developed an understanding of what, what, I, what I was truly brought in this world for and began forming my new self into a being focused on the foreverness of personal growth. This being was born and now awoke. This being was born and now awoke me to this whole new life. The first step in forever personal growth began with forgiveness in order to be able to give myself a new chance at a new life that being a life of internal foreverness in my heart. Through my heart, by living each day and each minute with heart, it came and it grew. I became incessantly aware of how this present being of matter that I now lived in, called awareness, would not slip away anytime soon, nor anytime in the future. I knew, felt, and lived the fact that I would now always be in continual phase of learning and growth all fueled by an ever-shifting mindset, a mindset shifting with constant awareness. This was an awareness that uncovered and showed me the past negativity I lived in daily and how it was fueled by the old mind, the negativity that covered happiness with blame, covered gratitude with excuses, and covered contentment with harsh rhetoric on myself for losing and destroying my past life. Yet through this newfound awareness, the ego's cover no longer worked. I now saw how through the fuel of plausible nothingness that I could obtain and maintain happiness in my own mind for anything around me in my current life and everything that had taken place in my past life. This was a new outlook on life 
as I built this new life here in jail. An outlook of facing and overcoming obstacles each and every time through the fuel of positivity and forgiveness. An outlook that now fueled and filled my meaning in life for this new being on this new path in life. I saw myself now growing as a spiritual being, a being of which I could see we all have the opportunity to turn on with ourselves and grow further in life anytime, anywhere, in any place, in any situation. The choice is up to each individual being. That is what I awoke to. This phase gave me a better understanding of who I was in life, who I had become in life, and moreover, for the newfound opportunity for who, what, and where I was growing into in life. I then shifted in these next six weeks and turned all of my negativity and blame to current happiness and growth. I was fueled by gratitude for the present and knew my passion for the future would continue to blossom from this point forward. Here I developed a happiness for the positive, but more importantly, grew an abundance of understanding for the negative. This was happiness for the yin and happiness for the yang, all by being aware. My awoken spirit for life developed and grew into existence through the fuel of my new dreams of a bountiful future. This was all done by ending my past life through forgiveness. This was forgiveness to myself for the mistakes I made that brought me here. It was also showing me the meaning behind the mistakes for being here and how I could grow in the future. This was also a forgiveness to those along the way that I hurt as I ended up here. And more soulfully in the end, this was a forgiveness deep within me that I found was fuel for my opportunity to grow by never, ever giving up. And through this step of forgiveness and this step in forgiveness, I was done being done and now ready to grow. The past disconnected from the present and I was able to live peacefully in the moment of now. This was my new welcomed present of which I unwrapped and found multiple gifts given to me. The gift of awareness, the gift of contentment with plausible nothingness, and the gift of knowing that when obstacles arise, quote, this too shall pass, end quote. And from here, daily growth became a routine. Quote, Forgiveness cuts the ties of the past and unharnesses bountiful growth in the future.